Welcome to the July 12th, 2012 meeting of the Northampton City Council. I'm Mayor David Narkowitz. Uh, before we begin the public comment session, I've uh, been asked to announce uh, that we would like to have uh, both uh, members of the City Council as well as members in the audience to put your cell phones on airplane mode. Um, we've been uh, experiencing some audio uh, uh, difficulties for folks who are watching the meeting at home. Uh, and we are doing an experiment to see if we can rule out uh, whether it's uh, cell signals that are causing it. Um, uh, you should also, of course, fasten your seat belts and put your seats, uh, your tray tables in the upright position. Um, uh, so, okay, so we'll now begin the meeting with the public comment. Uh, and I will um, call people up who've signed up on our public comment sheet. And you'll note that we have a uh, three minute timer over my shoulder. And that's there to allow you to see how much time you have. And we ask you to please respect the three minute time limit so that others have an equal opportunity to speak. Um, and I will call the uh, first speaker, uh, Idan uh, Dara. I'm sorry if I've mangled your name. If you could just uh, also just state your name and address for the record as well. Okay, well, my name is Idan Donraj. Sorry. It's okay. So, yeah, I've been a resident of Northampton since 2006. I went to grad school at UMass, and I work here in uh, Northampton in the service industry here. And um, I think it's a terrific place to live. Um, and it's got a really good set of progressive liberal values that I think brings a lot of people uh, to live here. Uh, unfortunately, uh, from a worker's perspective, when people exercise their, uh, their constitutional right and their human right to form a union of their own choosing um, and to participate in related activities, the, uh, the outcome is quite similar to the rest of the country where they're uh, more than 50% of the time, probably larger than that, intimidated or interfered with in one way or the other. That usually stretches the limits of law, doesn't go outright beyond it. So what um, workers in uh, different, I've had direct experiences doing this, uh, having these things happen to me and my coworkers, myself, and other people have had it as well. Uh, an ad hoc group of us came together and said that it would be, it would make sense and be very reasonable for Northampton to have a resolution to recognize the right to organize and just gave workers a little more strength in that process. I think it's uh, reasonable because it's part of what it means to live in Northampton. Um, and the people that are backing this resolution are notable. Uh, not only do we have the Human Rights Commission has endorsed it, but um, the, the group, the, uh, the the Workers' Rights Board that would report to the uh, Human Rights Commission uh, in support of the um, workers' grievances that they were facing as they were organizing campaigns includes noticeable people as former Mayor Mary Ford. Uh, so this is really into the culture of what it means to be a Northampton and Western Mass resident. And I think, if anything, it's also going to strengthen uh, workers' rights and make people feel safe to exercise their human rights to participate in exercise of the union of their own choosing. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Donovich. The next speaker is Carrie Brown. No, that's not possible. Hi. Uh, my name is Carrie Brown. I live in Northampton. Uh, and I just wanted to point out that from the Smith College area, straight on down downtown through to um, you know, past Bridge Street and everything. Uh, there are a lot of people who um, are working in, uh, you know, what constitutes the, I'm guessing, primary uh, Northampton economy. Uh, and they can't uh, shop at most of the shops that, um, that are there or, you know, go out to eat at the restaurants. Uh, probably that they work at themselves because um, they're not making a living wage and probably they're also not covered with uh, sick, sick days or health insurance. So I support Edan's resolution. Thanks. The next speaker is Marjorie Hess. Thank you. My name is Marjorie Hess. I'm a resident of Northampton. I've been here since 2006. I've 
name is Marjorie Hess, and I live on Masonic Street. Um, I'm a member of the Northampton Living Wage Coalition, and the Living Wage Coalition Steering Committee met earlier tonight and unanimously voted to endorse the right to organize resolution. In 2009, the City Council passed the Living Wage Resolution as a way to support Northampton workers. The Living Wage Resolution asks all Northampton businesses and employees to pay a living wage to their workers. Tonight's resolution, the right to organize, is another way to support Northampton workers, and I urge you to support it. Thank you. Thank you, Marjorie. The next speaker is Janelle Jordan. I'm here for a totally different topic. My topic is related to the bear ordinance, feeding of wildlife. Black bears are getting a lot of attention these days for the wrong reasons. They're venturing too close to homes and into backyards looking for food. Bears that look for food near your home or in your yard likely have learned bad habits from people who feed them intentionally or unintentionally by carelessly leaving out food or garbage. There have been a growing number of conflicts between bears and people in the city of Northampton. Feeding bears, inadvertent or otherwise, is a serious public safety concern expressed by the Board of Health, Mass Department of Fisheries and Wildlife, and the Northampton Police Department. It constitutes a nuisance and a menace to property and the health, safety, and welfare of the residents of the city. Black bears live in close proximity to people in Northampton. Over the past several years, human wildlife encounters dealing with black bears have increased. Human provided food sources are a primary cause of conflict between black bears and people here in Northampton. Ordinances are a necessary part of any successful human bear conflict management plan. Education and voluntary compliance are rarely enough to encourage everyone in the community to effectively manage potential bear attractants. And it just takes one bird feeder or poorly stored bag of dog food to sentence an unassuming bear to an early death. To avoid possible confrontations and property damage from bears, the most effective and long-lasting strategy is prevention. I believe that this ordinance that you're voting on tonight will be a very important part of an effective and long-lasting strategy. I also believe that a public awareness campaign should also ensure that residents are aware of this new ordinance, why it's being implemented, i.e. to prevent bears from becoming food conditioned and thus a threat to public safety and what the consequences of violating the new rules are. My interest is and has always been not for my own property but for everyone living in the city of Northampton including the black bears. I want to thank the city councilors, the board of health, the Massachusetts Department of Fisheries, Fisheries and Wildlife, and the Northampton Police Department. I hope you vote yes. Thanks. Thank you. The next speaker is Patricia Healy. Hi, my name is Patty Healy, 21 Longfellow Drive um, in Florence. I'm here as a member of the Massachusetts Nurses Association, and I'm a union member in a hospital in Massachusetts, and I'm here to support the resolution brought forward by my brothers and sisters here. Um, the Mass Nurses Association represents hundreds of, of um, union members here in Northampton alone, as well as 2,000 members in Western Mass, and the MNA has uh, the first uh, bargaining unit in Massachusetts was formed here in Western Mass, and the first um, first group of nurses to unionize in Massachusetts. Um, the fat first group came from um, Western Mass. So we've had a, a wonderful history here of organizing. However, over the past um, 20 years, uh, it's been very clear that the, uh, the uh, employers, especially very large employers and um, in healthcare, Bay State Medical Center is one that I'm sure you're aware that they have been absolutely vehemently opposed to um, organizing. And uh, a number of nurses who have attempted to um, bring forward uh, uh, information about unsafe working conditions, unsafe conditions for patients, um, as, uh, as they should do under their professional license, have been terminated at Bay State Medical Center and blacklisted from working in other hospitals in this area. I, for one, am a blacklisted nurse um, in Boston. I cannot work in certain hospitals because I'm a union member and I've spoken um, in public um, about unsafe conditions in hospitals. Um, 
one of the benefits of, of supporting workers to organize in health care is a, is a very definite benefit to all members in this community, and that is that professionals who care for you can speak up about the unsafe practices that happen in the hospitals, unsafe staffing, medical errors, um, uh, uh, and numerous other things that happen to patients in the hospitals and to the community without retribution if they are union members. You have the right to organize, you have the right to belong to a union, even if you're a union member, um, a, a manager, uh, excuse me, an employer can fire you, but you have the right to win your job back and to stand up for your, your, your um, position and uh, being uh, an advocate for patients. Um, uh, the last thing I wanted to mention is that um, the Mass Nurses Association was instrumental, the union was instrumental in the country for stopping mass smallpox immunizations of healthcare workers during the Bush administration when we went to war. It was the, it was the Massachusetts Nurses Association who took the first step and organized health professionals across the country and, and stopped the unnecessary, incredibly dangerous exposure of smallpox to be reintroduced to the population in, in Massachusetts and across the United States. And the only reason that happened is because those nurses were unionized and protected under the law. Thanks. Thank you. Well timed. Uh, next speaker is Joe Twarog. Thank you. I'm here to speak also in favor of the uh, right to organize um, resolution here. Um, I just wanted to speak on when the National Labor Relations Act was passed in 1935. It was in the midst of the Great Depression. And Congress and President Franklin Roosevelt spoke in favor of union organizing, in favor of union organizing. It's astonishing that that would happen from Congress and the President. Can we see that happening today? I don't think so. Um, so right now, uh, labor constitutes in the private sector about 7% of, organ of uh, the organized workforce. Only 7% is organized in the private sector. If you can include the public sector, it's about 11%. And yet the right wing bashes labor. 89% is unorganized, and yet we're blamed for um, um, all the ills in society. Uh, I'm a, I also work for a union. I'm a labor educator. I live in Florence. So since then, the things have turned. And after President Reagan busted the union and granted that was uh, an illegal strike, but they were desperate, the issue still remained. When you fly, you should worry about the uh, air traffic controllers, because the issues still remain 30 years later. Um, it became uh, fashionable to bust unions. And as we've already heard, that there's a whole industry that's arisen around busting unions. And they make oodles of money to bust unions. Um, so I want to read two quotes. I want to end with two quotes. One is, if a man tells you he loves America, yet hates labor, he is a liar. If a man tells you he trusts America, yet fears labor, he is a fool. Those are pretty harsh words. And that was from that radical Republican president, Abraham Lincoln. Um, here's another one. Only a fool will try to deprive working men and women of the right to join the union of their choice. Another Republican president, Dwight David Eisenhower. So there's this old saw that um, those who don't learn from history are uh, De what's it, doomed to repeat it. Hey, I'd be, I'd be glad to go back in history. So, um, unfortunately, the words labor union now are equated with the bubonic plague, and that's unfortunate. So I'm asking the city council to endorse this. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Amy Bookbinder. Hi. Uh, Amy <laughs> And I'm also here in support of the resolution for the right to organize. You know, my mother and my father were labor organizers in New York. And my daughter, who is a colleague of E. Dan's in the UAW, is also a union organizer. And my parents, my parents aren't here anymore to see uh, what's going on now. They'd be very proud of my daughter for her work for labor, but they'd be absolutely appalled at how tough a job it is given the climate in this country. 
so on behalf of them and on behalf of all the workers in the city current and future I hope you'll pass this resolution and join all of us in saying solidarity thank you, thank you. the next speaker is Roy C Martin And ladies and gentlemen, uh, Honorable Mayor, ladies and gentlemen of the City Council, uh, I come tonight to thank you, Honorable Mayor, for nominating me for the Disabilities Committee. And uh, tonight there will be a vote on it, and uh, hopefully, right, I don't know yet what the vote will be, but hopefully I'll get elected in. Uh, I realize it's only a, a seat that is uh, sitting there just waiting for me, as you might say. All right, but I'll have to wait for someone to die before I really sit on the committee. Now, all right, with that said, uh, you know, when I hear about unions, I think about uh, way back in the 20s and the 30s when we had the real bloodletting unions and they were going and fighting and, and you know, they were beating each other with baseball bats and everything else and hiring people to come in and uh, the strike breakers is coming in against the strikers, you know, all of that. Now that was back in the 30s, all right? Now today we have a different society and a whole different bunch of people. And I think the people that want to organize and want to get together and want to have unions should be allowed to have unions. If I remember right, a few years, well, quite a few years ago, uh, there was a law there was federal law that stated that every person, as long as a majority within, uh, within a district had signed up to vote and voted on it, they could have a union. Now, I know a lot of places, right, and I can mention Toys R Us is one of them, right? You know, you mention union at Toys R Us and you're out the door. Uh, I know some people that work there that got fired because they mentioned unions. And I don't think that was right. I think that people have a total right to organize. They have a total right to get together. They have a total right to speak on their unions and uh, you know, elect their officers and have people speak on behalf of them. Uh, my ex, my son's mother, used to be president of the UAW, 22, 23. And uh, that's when she was pregnant for my son. And uh, I think she did a pretty good job, uh, you know. Uh, when Thea was there, right, you know, it was good, right? But we also got to look who else was working for the union. Claire Higgins was working for the union before she came here. She was working for the union before she came here and, and putting unions together. And then she came here and became mayor and she started union breaking. So, right, when the shoe goes on the other foot, what happens, right? Let's hope that we've got people that really realize that things are getting better and that things should get better. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Martin. The next speaker is uh, George Costigan. <coughs> Does not appear to be here. Um, the next speaker then signed up is Jordana Amato. Northampton Human Rights Committee and I'm uh, speaking here to support the resolution to support um, the workers right to organize and bargain collectively I'll just reiterate that um, the right to organize and bargain collectively is actually already a right it is um, a right under the UN's um, Universal Declaration of Human Rights and it's also protected um, it's also a protected right under the US law but as we can see from um, Patty's story the National Labor Relations Board is underfunded um, and it has been insufficient in protecting these rights um, and workers have suffered as a result. Uh, the reason why this um, issue is so compelling to me is due to its in economic impact. Right now, in income inequality is the highest it's ever been in the US. These enormous profits of companies are being made on the backs of workers who are barely making a living wage, if at all. 
The rich and powerful are squeezing the American workers and reaping the profits. We have to address this on a local and national level. Unionization and collective bargaining is an integral first step in reintroducing dignity and prosperity into the hands of workers. Thanks. Thank you very much. That concludes the list of folks who've signed up to speak. Are there any other folks who wish to speak in the public comment? Uh, Mr. Jones? And, uh, so, well, if you could just, okay. Certainly. You can just again remind folks to state their name and address for the record. Thank you. My name is Sarah Weinberger, and I live on Harrison Avenue in Northampton. Um, I'm a member also of the Northampton Human Rights Commission, and I'm very proud that the commission is co-sponsoring the resolution in support of the right of workers to organize. It's important to remember that workers' rights can be threatened everywhere, including in our own community. This resolution affirms the rights of employees to claim what is already accorded to them by law and to strengthen existing labor laws, including providing the right to organize for all classes of workers. The Northampton Human Rights Commission advocates for the basic human rights of all people as articulated in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And I just want to specifically mention Article 23 of the Declaration that says, everyone has the right to work, to free choice of employment, to just and favorable conditions of work, and to protection against unemployment. Everyone without any discrimination has the right to equal pay for equal work. Everyone who works has the right to just and favorable remuneration, ensuring for himself and his family or herself an existence worthy of human dignity and supplemented, if necessary, by other means of social protection. And lastly, everyone has the right to form and to join trade unions for the protection of their interests. On behalf of the Northampton Human Rights Commission, I urge the members of City Council to affirm the right to organize resolution in order to further the human rights of working people in our community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, um, Jeff Jones, 76 Woods Road. Um, in Florence, Ward 6, I work for United Food and Commercial Workers Union. Um, I'm also on the Northampton Living Wage Coalition. Um, the Northampton Housing Authority, the Hampshire Franklin Labor Council. Um, I spent a week out in Wisconsin um, with the Walker recall campaign um, trying to ensure the right to collectively bargain in Wisconsin. We didn't win that fight, um, but it was some of the best work I ever did in my life. I had um, school teachers breaking down and crying on their front steps. I didn't really have to say anything at all, just hand them a leaflet about um, the sheer weight of class sizes that they were gonna have to deal with in the next year and how they had no mechanism uh, to try and ensure that that was reversed. Um, in a similar fashion, my native state of Ohio, uh, when they tried to remove collective bargaining, um, they had a, a campaign to repeal SB5 in Ohio that was overwhelmingly supported by the people of Ohio. Um, and that legislation was struck um, down. In a similar vein here in Northampton, um, I think we have to to do what we can do on a local level. And even though a lot of these um, issues are theoretically legal, um, as we've heard tonight with our lead speaker, um, we still have a lot of work to do in Northampton. And I would urge the council to support the resolution before them. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jasper Lapiensky. I live in Ward 3. Um, and just for the record, I love unions, but uh, voting is a form of public bargaining. Recalls are bad, whatever. You know my spiel on that. OK. The warmest October day the Valley has ever had was October 17, 1908. Towards the end of a three-month-long drought, the air and land were so dry that temperatures became more and more radicalized. From 40 degrees that morning, it soared to 91 degrees that afternoon before plunging back to 40. Since then, it has yet to reach 90 again in October. Um, <clears throat> since then, though, the seasons have also changed dramatically this past year, of course. The 90 degree weather was in March, while October has officially or unofficially taken its place as New England's new snowiest month. Uh, so I think it's fair to say that most people who can hear me now believe in global warming. 
I also think it's fair, just as fair, to say that just as many people have nothing to say on the subject of solving it. Um, so sorry to be blunt, but in my opinion, this city has right in front of our eyes a litany of things we could be doing about it here and now. Easy things, cheap things, useful things that could make a difference. Things like plowing the friggin' bike path on King Street. So it's kind of incredible to me that we could even think about not doing it. How long is it, half a mile? Okay, if it's half a mile, it would take 40 seconds of a plow driver's time to run it. Having no clue what the DPW pays, let's just say that at $25 an hour, that would cost 75 cents a storm. The snowiest winter ever would cost less than $10, so don't tell me it's a funding issue because you are flat out lying. Uh, the bike path to Florence somehow gets plowed every year. It's not a fiscal miracle, it gets plowed because the city has chosen to plow it. I personally like that they plow it, thank you. Uh, but why does that one get plowed? It, plow it gets plowed because it falls under the safe routes to school provision which requires it. It falls under this provision, of course, funny story, because there's no sidewalk on Bridge Road. There's no sidewalk on North Maple, there's no sidewalk on Oak Street, there's no sidewalk on Chestnut Street, there's no sidewalk on Fox Farms Road. And all of these sidewalks, if they ever get built, would never be cleared anyway, because unlike bike paths, the city doesn't clear sidewalks at all. They're left to property owners who have no incentive to clear it in a few days or let alone right away. Uh, the lack of sidewalks, the lack of city responsibility for the sidewalks we have, and the abandoning of the King Street bike path, these are all choices that the city makes. Um, it's not a financial problem. The city council and school board combined spend 90 some odd million dollars every year. The money is there. In fact, it's not a fiscal issue, but a moral one. We have money, we choose to spend it on other things. Fine. The budget is, of course, a book of choices everywhere, and Northampton is no exception when it comes to putting its gasoline infrastructure first, everything else second, and its pedestrian infrastructure dead last. In fact, I'd say we're actually a little bit better than most places at offering non-petroleum transportation options. That's an honor bestowed accidentally upon the least crazy person in a hospital. Please plow the bike path. It's not that hard. Thank you. Thank you. Can I submit my Most definitely. <coughs> Thank you, Jasper. Sorry, my time didn't work. That's okay. Um, yes, ma'am. Uh, certainly. If you just want to hand it, we can pass it around. Good evening. Uh, my name is Deborah Martin. Um, I'm a private in the 15th Massachusetts. I'm known as Private Augie. And I just wanted the, um, it's actually an announcement and uh, a public awareness of what's going to be happening in August at Look Park. Um, August, starting August 10th, actually, Friday night till, through Sunday. Um, there's going to be upwards of over 300 reenactors camping at Wolf Park, and we're going to be holding a battle reenactment for the, the entire weekend. And it could um, very well bring in over 3,000 spectators, additional to, to what's already coming to the park, and also coming into Northampton and, and eating at the restaurants and swarming all over in these kind of uniforms. I am part of the union, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, the battlefield is a 15 acre battlefield at Look Park. I don't know if everyone's familiar with what a great place it is to hold this kind of event. It's the first time in over a decade that something like this has happened, and it's the first time ever in the Western Mass that they've ever held a Civil War reenactment, uh, an actual battle reenactment. Um, we're going to be reenacting uh, a battle that was called the Battle of the Seven Pines that was uh, fought in 1862. And we thought it appropriate because of Pine Theater that's at, at Loke Park. On um, Sunday, we're going to be doing a honor, honor uh, memorial battle uh, gun salute <coughs> to uh, Captain Russ Mayette, who passed away a couple years ago, probably everyone's Everyone's familiar with him. Um, that's pretty much it. We're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna do the, a train robbery. We're gonna do a battle at the at the bridge. There's gonna be things going on all over the place in the park. There's pe people are gonna be swarming all over Northampton. And I just <coughs> wanted everybody to be aware what was going on. Thank and you. come on down, please, to watch. Thank you.
believe that concludes our public comment uh, session for this evening. So we'll close the public comment session, and I will ask the clerk to call uh, roll for the regular. Councilor Adams. Here. Councilor Carney. Present. Councilor White. Here. Councilor Freeman Daniels. Here. Councilor Large. Present. Councilor Murphy. Here. Councilor Schwartz. Here. Okay. The first order of business is the approval of your minutes of June twenty first, two thousand and twelve. Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Uh, next under minutes, uh, we have the quarterly review of the um, by the city council president and city solicitor of executive session minutes. And I will uh, turn the floor over to the city council president to uh, okay. it was It was established that minutes that uh, executive session minutes essentially for the public's information is when we actually go into closed session to discuss things such as collective bargaining or, or <coughs> lawsuits and the like and the minutes remain basically sealed and not public until such time that the circumstances are settled or expired and that is the case with um, two sets of minutes from December 17th 2009 and also January 7, 2010, uh, concerning the uh, purchase, exchange, lease, and value of real property and uh, relative to the roundhouse lot. These two, we, the city solicitor and in consultation with the mayor and the city solicitor and myself, and determined that these are now, it's, it's appropriate that these be released to the public for public viewing. Um, and we haven't figured out, <laughs> we still haven't figured out a procedural issue because essentially these minutes were established when many of these counselors weren't here. So we cannot actually approve the minutes. So we're a little, we're a little bit at sea here. We can't approve them in so far as we weren't present at the meeting. So that there is a bit of a rub there. Have you, has the city solicitor come back? Some of us can. Some of us can. I can say that uh, we've, we, uh, one of the issues is that um, uh, if you read the law around what are the reasons you can go into executive session, um, approving minutes isn't one of them right. explicitly in the law. So we don't, the, your council doesn't use executive session very often. So there can be years, uh, decades <laughs> between executive <laughs> sessions. And so, uh, but we did have a ruling from the, um, from the I believe it's from the attorney general that indicates that, that they do allow as an administrative matter for a body to go into executive session to approve minutes. Um, so if the council wants to look at changing that practice, they could. The difficulty, of course, is that, as you stated, many, many uh, oftentimes there may not be a majority of people who are actually at the meeting. Um, so I think that's something you may want to examine when you do your rules review. I'm sorry, I'm I just, I just, I don't think you need to be present. I don't, I don't think anybody has to ha need to have been present to vote on these. I mean. Right. That's well, I just don't right. think it's a requirement. I mean. Well, the difference being, and I think your point is the difference is whether we accept the minutes and introduce mm -hmm. them as opposed to approve the minutes mm -hmm. because we don't have the capacity to, we might not have the capacity to approve them, certainly with the majority of people present at the, at the time. Well, I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't, I've never considered the distinction really, but I don't, I don't know of any requirement of, of either really. Mm -hmm. Well, f so then we'll just leave it as is these are these minutes are now available to the public for those who want to line up and get tickets to see them they'll be available for the public to uh, and, and and you can get them through uh, Mayor Madura in fact if you're interested in seeing the, uh, the minutes as, they were, as they were written thank you okay so the next item on the agenda are proclamations resolutions awards and recognitions and we have a resolution uh, this is upon the recommendation of City Councilor Maureen Carney, uh, Councilor Paul Spector, and the Human Rights Commission. And this is a uh, resolution entitled, The Right to Organize. Whereas unions have historically helped to bring economic and social democracy to American society, and whereas the City of Northampton wishes to promote respect for human rights including workers' freedom to form unions without employer interference and bargain collectively, and has a history of support 
for the freedom to form unions and the important public benefits inherent in collective bargaining. And whereas the current federal framework under the National Labor Relations Act does not protect the rights of all workers to freely decide whether or not to join a union of their own choosing, and whereas failure to protect freedom to form unions is exacting a heavy <coughs> economic, social, and political price from workers and communities throughout our city, commonwealth, and nation, including but not limited to increased risk to workplace health and safety hazards resulting in increased injuries and illnesses, suppressed wages, decreased job quality, and worsened economic inequality, and whereas immigrant workers, though they have the legal right to organize, are much more susceptible to labor right abuses because they do not have equal access to ameliorative relief, and whereas protecting the freedom to form unions is also vital to public health because union members are far more likely than non-union member workers to enjoy better wages, health benefits, and safer working conditions. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council of Northampton, Massachusetts, one, supports the rights of workers to organize and bargain collectively, two, calls upon employers to a, recognize the rights of those who work for them, either directly or indirectly, under contractual arrangements, to be treated with dignity, to be paid a living wage, and to work in a healthy, safe, and secure workplace, b, respect that the question to unionize or not is for employees to decide and agree not to express an opinion either pro or con on the merits of unionization. C. Abide by their employees' decision when a majority indicates, by card check, an election supervised by the NLRB or other neutral body, petition, or other public statement, that it supports union representation and engage in collective bargaining to achieve a written agreement without undue delay. D, refrain from abusing National Labor Relations Board elections and appeals by using them as means for delaying or avoiding representation for their employees. And E, refrain from abusing the rights of undocumented immigrant workers. Three, calls upon the United States government to amend the National Labor Relations Act to A, provide for increased and meaningful penalties for the commission of unfair labor practices, B, ensure timely conduct of elections following the filling of representation, filing of representation petitions by referring issues to post-election proceedings whenever possible, and C, ensure that employers and labor organization representatives have equal access to potential members of a bargaining unit during representation election campaigns. D, include domestic and agricultural laborers as workers with a, with a legal right to organize. Four, calls upon the Commonwealth to address labor issues on the state level by A, improving state labor laws to provide organizing and collective bargaining rights for workers in our commonwealth so that contracts must be negotiated within a specific time frame and b improving and enforcing state laws against the use of public funds to oppose unions and c ensuring that state and local government employee employers continue to collectively bargain with unions and respect pre-existing contracts five calls upon Congress to give its full support to the National Labor Relations Board so it can continue to protect workers in the United States. And be it further resolved that the Human Rights Commission will support attention to workers' human rights in accordance with the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 23, which refers to workers' rights. Each year, the local chapter of the Western Massachusetts Workers' Rights Board shall provide the Human Rights Commission with a list of employers who respond affirmatively to Section 1 and 2 above. The Human Rights Commission shall examine the list and convey it to the Northampton City Council for public announcement. If the Workers' Rights Board finds that any employer has violated their workers' rights to organize and bargain collectively in a repeated manner that is egregious and against the spirit and instructions of this resolution, then the board shall notify the Human Rights Commission of such findings. The Human Rights Commission may then decide to take any of the following actions. 
A, notify the employer via letter that the commission is aware of these claims of conduct. The letter may request a meeting with the employer to discuss how these claims relate to their workers' human rights. B, may request a discussion between the employer and the employees with the Human Rights Commission or other nonpartisan appointed board as the mediator. And C, may refer the claimed conduct to the National Labor Relations Board, the Commonwealth Relations Board, or other labor rights board or office. Move approval. Second. There's been a motion made and seconded to approve, and I will uh, open the floor to debate. I would like to recognize, I assume, one of the co-sponsors, Councillor Carney. Thank you, um, and thanks for inviting me to speak on this. Uh, I actually want to, first of all, thank the Human Rights Commission for um, uh, doing all of the background work uh, prior to tonight's meeting with a number of folks, and that included Councilor Spector and myself, who couldn't be here. Uh, Councilor Spector couldn't be here. Um, and that involved really looking over a number of drafts of this resolution. Um, I, I'm really um, proud to be a sponsor of this. And uh, as was mentioned in the public comment session, can also aff affirm that this, this is, well, the National Labor Relations Act does already give uh, all citizens in the country the right to organize. What this resolution does is reaffirm in the city of Northampton that particular right, but also goes uh, a step further in terms of acknowledging what the United Nations acknowledged some number of years ago, that uh, workers' rights are human rights and that many of the uh, existing laws that we have on the books need uh, um, some real uh, more teeth to them, that they're right now not being enforced to the level they should be. If, if folks would indulge me, actually, I spent a little time before I got here, I pulled out my copy that a friend gave me of the Northampton book. I don't know how many of my colleagues have this, perhaps uh, counselors Murphy or Barge, but this is the book of the Northampton's tercentenary uh, put together in 1954 for the 300th anniversary. Um, I wasn't there. Um, I don't know if there's anyone actually uh, in this uh, room who was there, but and maybe Councillor Labarge remembers 19, I, I don't want to allude to anyone's age, but um, I will say that there are great stories in this book and I recommend it highly. One of those was the history of the labor of unions in Northampton, written by my predecessor on the Northampton Labor Council, and that was the late Louis Leopold. Um, so, uh, it, what, and I won't take a long time, but I just want to mention a few <laughs> paragraphs here that kind of set the stage for Northampton then. Uh, we would look at uh, the turn of the century, so within the 1900, turn of the century saw the greatest growth in Northampton labor unions that had ever been experienced. In 1898, there were seven unions. By 1903, the figure had jumped to 35. Membership in the Central Labor Union was 395 members in 1899, organized in nine unions. Four years later, the same body totaled 1,400 with 29 constituent unions and an influence great enough then to have the city council pass an ordinance requiring union help in construction and repair. William McDonald, president of the Weavers Union, while dedicating the Central Labor Union Hall, could truly say, the difficulties encountered have been numerous and great, but now conditions are better. Um, there's also one other uh, important paragraph referencing perhaps the most dramatic episode in Northampton labor history, the strike of street railway employees in Northampton in 1914. On August 19th, a dispute between labor and management resulted in a general walkout. Pinkerton detectives, we all know those, it's hard to believe, were here in Northampton. Experts, as referred in this book, in labor disputes were imported to oppose the strikers. The union, however, encouraged the general public in Northampton and its boycotted the trolleys by running jitneys, which were well patronized. Republican Mayor Fiker, I'm not sure if he's one of those on the mm -hmm. boards here. Yes, sir. Right? Um, a mayor, 
Fiker thought the situation serious enough to warrant a request for state police. However, the Commonwealth's Democratic Lieutenant Governor disagreed. The governor, siding with the mayor, sent 14 state stateies. Sympathy was generally on the side of the strikers, with many of the cases of store clerks refusing to wait on the Pinkertons. A union victory had one inter interesting result when police had to escort the de detectives to the depot to protect them from the wrath of the public. So I, I guess I kind of say that just to, that Northampton has a long history of really supporting its workers um, and their rights to belong to unions. We can look around at all of the buildings here in the city of Northampton and know that the, uh, really the vast majority were built by union craftspeople. Um, and certainly all of the mechanicals during those days were uh, built and installed by, and by union tradespeople. In those days, it really was a public, really public safety and public health where the prime, one out of every two electricians, for example, um, were, could be killed, would be killed on the job, especially line workers. So, um, you know, we in Northampton also have and still have our largest employers. We have Smith College, a, a union employer, um, Cole Morgan, a union employer, the city of Northampton, union employer, uh, and, and of course, Cooley Dickinson Hospital with a 50-year-long charter, I, I believe, of the nurses' union there. A strong union presence. We have all of our own city unions that have go back to the turn of the century and early teens, as well as the numerous, numerous um, um, so-called nonprofit, I guess as they're called, uh, social service agencies, and uh, bus drivers and stop and shop and grocery workers. So there, uh, there is a large union presence in Northampton, yet at the same time, as we heard earlier uh, in the public comment session, there is uh, also an undertone that makes it difficult for those starting wanting to form new unions to actually engage in that practice. So I think what this does give us in the city of Northampton is, a, a, again, a way to reaffirm that commitment to people's rights, to their rights to collectively bargain with their employer and to um, communicate that to those employers in the city of Northampton and residents. I would um, uh, really welcome and invite my colleagues to join me in supporting this resolution tonight. Is there anyone who wishes to speak? Councilor Labarge. Yes, um, I'm supporting this 100%. I highly agree that citizens should have the rights to organize being a union member myself for many many years just like you consular carney i mean you represent many many union members how can you not say no to something like this and they're still and i recall going to over by the calvin theater and they were still talking about that there still was a lot of work to do about injuries still occurring and I believe that. I've read it, and I believe it. I will always support all the nurses throughout the state of Massachusetts. Always have, always will. And I have a sign out in front of my lawn. If I could put 10 of them out there, I would. I think that the way that they're treated, to me, okay, is unfair. And for the amount of hours and work and how they give such professional care to very ill people or people who are, you know, getting ready to come home and so forth. It's them that make our people get better. So I also believe that you should have your rights. If you're working for somebody and that you would like to belong to a union, I think that employers should understand that yes, you do have a right and it is a human rights that you should be protected. And also that employer needs to be educated. There's no question about that, about your human rights and your dignity and respect. Okay, safety is a big issue on jobs. I'm gonna support this 100% because I believe in it. Council President. The um, resolutions are expression of resolve of the council and the majority revoke would express that resolve. 
And, you know, there hasn't been a disparity between classes. There, I said the word. I'm sorry. But the, the, there hasn't been such a great disparity since the Gilded Age. The Gilded Age actually was uh, when the United States was governed by wealthy tycoons who brought in immigrants from all over the globe. This is actually before immigration was illegal. It was a, it was a job source. We, we, we exploited people um, brutally. And we established, uh, as people became established, they also got uppity. They wanted safety. They wanted good wages. They wanted reasonable working hours. They wanted health and protection. They organized and they created unions and consequently created the middle class. The middle class, which is actually now disappearing faster than the polar ice caps. And we are sitting here at a time that's hearkening back to the Gilded Age. And there are a number of people in office who would love to see that Gilded Age revisited where we eliminate all the benefits of the New Deal and all the things that are currently being called socialist programs, but actually point in fact are social welfare programs, meaning we as community members benefit entirely from the, the our, our combined efforts. <coughs> Anything that we do, I mean, this doesn't have the force of law, which is often frustrating on some level. We don't, we can't impose anything on anyone other than our expressed resolve to to respect and understand and promote all the virtues that come with union organization. And I, you know, I, I, I worked in the service industry here in Northampton uh, for a quarter of a century, so that's almost right back when the Gilded Age ended right around the end of the service. And, and was not a member of a union, but was a member of, 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 a, of a shop, if you will, that abided by living wage, uh, living wage creed. And benefit, I was able to work in the service industry for 25 years. You know, who knew that a video clerk would be a career? But the, the, the fact that there are any number of people who work here in essentially part-time status are considered to essentially be cheap labor and nothing more. We as human beings are far more than cogs. We as United States citizens want to be more than drones. We have aspirations, hopes, and ideals to be realized. And we were at our best when the unions actually established the protections and the rights that we are now seeing eroded aggressively, overtly, and perversely. So I'm, you know, I'm behind this as Councillor Labarge is 100% simply because I think we can't yell this loud enough, personally. Does anyone else wish to speak on the resolution? OK. Uh, hearing none, then I will ask, uh, I will ask the call the aides and nays. Um, all those in favor of the resolution, say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? OK, so it's adopted unanimously on first reading. Okay, um, the next item on the agenda are one-minute announcements from counselors. Are there any one-minute announcements? City Council President. I'm going to announce this from the start. It's, uh, it's There will be a hearing on Thursday, August 16, 2012 at 8 p.m. here in the Council Chambers for a petition for joint or identical poll location on Holly Street. The petition number is 12518430 if you're following along at home. Okay. Um, Councillor Kearney. Yes. Um, I want to announce that there, I'm trying to pull up because my phone is on airplane mode. It's difficult. <laughs> now, but uh, I, I want to announce that there will be a meeting, a community meeting on August 8th. Uh, the actual location to be determined, but I believe it will be somewhere in the vicinity of River Run. And this comes at the heels of the um, community meeting held and facilitated by Planning Director Fiden uh, a few weeks ago concerning the um, Connecticut River Greenway um, proposal that we're voting on tonight. And so the focus of that particular meeting will be to look at those developments there about um, the northern end of King Street and those would include um, the proposed uh, 
uh, sidewalks and traffic signal up by the industrial park, the um, any of the Damon Road reconstruction status where that is, the uh, um, previously mentioned boathouse project, and um, anything else that relates to that northern part of King Street. So please uh, stay tuned. We'll find some way to post that on the city's website or someplace else in terms of an actual uh, location. August 8th. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other announcements from the city council? Councilor Freeman Daniels. First, uh, first weekend in August is going to be the fourth annual Ward 3 Neighborhood Association Vegetable Garden Tour. Uh, Ward 3, of course, very illustrious in its history of agriculture. Uh, and uh, this year is, um, this is the fourth year for the Vegetable Garden Tour. Tickets are on sale at Cereos A2Z and Deals and Steals on uh, Pearl Street. And uh, it promises to be another great time with uh, no repeats from previously shown gardens. Uh, it's a great uh, walking tour or bike tour or driving tour, I, I guess, if uh, you're, you don't care about global warming. Um, through through Ward 3 and Ward 3 exclusively. So uh, buy your tickets. And it's the first week in August. Thanks. Thank you. Any other announcements? OK, hearing none, we'll move into the appointments, elections, and public hearings. Uh, you have several appointments uh, to city boards, commi uh, committees, and commissions. Uh, these are coming to you upon the recommendation of the Committee on Appointments and Evaluation. Uh, the first is. Uh, are two appointments to the Arts Council. Uh, George William Myers of 145 South Street in Northampton, a term uh, from June 2012 to June 2015. Uh, that's filling a vacancy. And Robin Glenn of 78 Rick Drive in Florence, a term of June 2012 to June uh, 2015, also filling a vacancy. Uh, would you like me to take these yeah, as a group? Take them as a group. Okay. The next is an appointment to the Committee on Disabilities. Uh, Roy C. Martin of 81 Con Street, apartment 539, uh, appointed as an associate member, a term from June 2012 to June 2015, uh, filling the expired term of Barbara Black. And finally, an appointment to the Planning Board. John Lutz of 291 Haydenville Road in Leeds, a term to expire March 2015, and he will be filling the unexpired term of Catherine Baker. Move to approve. Second. second. Okay. There's been a motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Um, we um, did interview all these um, citizens coming in for um, to be evaluated and I can't say like you know George Myers and Robin Glenn Roy Martin and John Lutz all of them were very well qualified um, they presented themselves very well and it was amazing how just like with the Arts Council which they're ready to go they want to make changes in the city and it was just amazing to hear what they had to say to us you know that they just want to get right in there and change things in Northampton. Um, and I know when Councillor Schwartz was with us also, I mean, it was just amazing, wasn't it, Councillor, just to hear what they want to do for our city. Roy Martin, who is here today, and I want to thank you for being here, Roy. I mean, he has worked with people with disabilities, and um, he is looking very forward to belonging to the Committee on Disabilities, and I think he will do well on it. John Lutz, very well qualified. Um, he is the Executive Director of um, Elderly Services, and he belongs to a tremendous amount of different organizations throughout the city, so we have some good people here. I, I just would echo everything Councilor Barch said. Great candidates. We're very fortunate. I'm strongly supportive. Are there any other uh, comments? Okay, so hearing none, um, all those in favor of these appointments say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so uh, congratulations and thank you to those folks. Thank you, Rob. 
Uh, the next item is, uh, this is a new appointment uh, to city boards, uh, committees and commissions. Uh, and this is brought before you for purposes of referral to your committee on appointments and evaluations. Uh, this is an appointment to the Conservation Commission. Uh, Tricia L. McGovern of 53 Avis Circle in Florence, a term to expire uh, March 2015, and this is a uh, filling of vacancy. Yeah, move to refer to appointments and evaluations. Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of referring, say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so that'll be referred uh, to your committee. We also have before us uh, an appointment this evening. Uh, this uh, comes to us uh, from uh, the Northampton Police Department. Uh, this is an appointment of uh, uh, Albert J. St. Ange uh, to the position of Special Police Officer, effective September 9th, 2012. And I'll read the appointment order uh, from uh, the Cap Captain Conkus. Uh, respectfully request that Albert J. St. Ange be appointed a Special Police Officer at the July 12th City Council meeting would you take effect on September 9th. As you are aware, Officer St. Ange, our longtime elementary school resource officer, is scheduled to retire on September 8th. He would like to continue to serve the city in this department in the capacity of a special police officer after his retirement. Second. Okay. There's been a motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion on the appointment? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Next, we have some uh, licenses. Uh, the first is a uh, taxi license. Uh, this is for um, Aaron's uh, Scott Bellamore uh, doing business as Aaron's Paradise Transportation. Uh, and uh, you'll note that there are four vehicles involved, and if you read through the packet that you um, uh, received, you'll see that there's information provided um, by the city clerk um, regarding the status. They're reporting that there's no outstanding taxes due as of June 26, 2012. Um, we have seems we have some representatives here. If I could just first get a motion, uh, move to accept the second it. And a second, um, and then I would ask for a motion to recognize uh, the applicants that are here this evening. So moved. Second. second it. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. If you could step forward and just uh, state your name and address. Thank you. I'm Neil Phillips from Springfield, and I'm their attorney, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Belmore, who operate the uh, Aaron's Paradise Transportation. Seeking four licenses. Okay, great. Uh, do you wish to make a statement, I'm, sir? I'm Scott Belmore, 221 Pine Street, Florence. Excellent. I'm Elizabeth. I'm his wife, 221 Pine Street, Florence, Mass. Excellent. Okay. So, uh, is, are there any questions from counselors about this uh, this application? Uh, if you could just um, give a brief description of the services that will be provided. Thank you, if I may. Sorry. For, in, in the past, they were offering a, a livery service under contract for certain uh, nonprofits. Is that true? Mm -hmm. And uh, hospitals and the like? Coley Dickinson service net. Transitional assistance throughout the whole state and Boston. And what do you plan to do with the four licenses, if you could explain that to the uh, council? Um, just service and maintaining people in uh, Northampton. We run a 24 hour service. We have a radio dispatch. We have Survival Center in Northampton, we have an account with them. We have clinical support options, we have an account with them. Cooley Dickinson Hospital, Hoyle Medical Hospital, we have Hoyle Health Center. Um, I think that's most in transitional assistance. Is your desire to be able to do call and pick up on dispatch now? Yes. As, as, as just beyond doing livery for uh, clients? Absolutely. Let's run a cab service. 24 hours. I appreciate, I really appreciate you guys applying for the license. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there any other uh, questions for the applicant or any other comments? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of approving the license say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstention? Okay, congratulations. Thanks. Thank, so, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. The next item is another uh, application for taxi license. Uh, this is uh, Brian DeRue and Justin Wentworth. 
and they are applying on behalf of uh, Green Go Green Cab and Transportation Company. Uh, this is again uh, taxi licenses, and it would be for three uh, vehicles. And again, we have reporting from the city clerk that indicates there are no outstanding taxes as of July 3rd. I would first entertain a motion. Move to accept the license. Second it. Okay. And move to uh, recognize the applicants. Second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Gentlemen. Hello. My name is Justin Wentworth. Live on 638 Riverside Drive. Um, we're both ex-employees of Green Cab, which you probably all know closed down June 1st. And we've decided to move ahead and start our own new company to service the Northampton area in a, I'm going to say, a much more legitimate way than a lot of companies have been doing recently. Um, we are looking to um, essentially serve the community in a safer, more affordable way than has been happening. Do you have any statements? Uh, Two Con Street, number unit 34. Okay. Instead of Scoot Street High Street. It's correct on here. It's correct on the application. Oh, so. yeah. 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 That's the home address. That's I think that's your home address. I think that's what that's listed for. That was the temporary beginning as we okay. were moving the process. It's just it, it is uh, Two Con Street, number four. Just yeah. for number the 34. Yeah. Councilor Carney. Oh, just since. Uh, uh, you alluded to this. Could you maybe expand a little bit upon, upon what you consider to be a safer and more um, economical practice uh, that you'll be? Absolutely. Um, for the most part, the safety, as we know, there's been about 15 companies running ass taxis throughout the area. And until now, Aaron's has been accepted. Since Green Cab closed, there was only one legal taxi service. The rest were running as delivery, which go under a whole different set of laws. Um, there was they don't have as much inspections of the vehicles they don't have to have all of their drivers go through cory checks to get taxi permits and over the years i've you know i've been driving taxis for four years now um, various companies under various models and i must say there have been some abuses that have happened through the taxis in the town that have gone on a lot of the companies are great there's a lot of great drivers i'm not trying to bad mouth the whole industry as it is but there have been sexual harassment suits. There have been drivers who have been driving under influence. And a lot of this is because they're not Corey checked. You know, nobody knows who's driving these cabs. Nobody knows how safe they are. Nobody knows how safe the vehicles are because they're not actual taxis. And we're looking to help provide a more legit, legal, and certified taxi service. Thank you. Justin, you're, you guys are basically transitioning from the the Picnelli group are you are you still are you kind of aspire I see green in the name so I was wondering if that's any indication of a we are dedicated to green technologies we are starting with three of the old green cab hybrids and in the future we're looking to move towards even greener hybrids because the Ford escapes you know there's other ones that get a bit of bet, like better gas mileage and are greener vehicles and as we know Technology is changing, and they're going to get greener and greener as time goes on. And we're looking to keep pushing forward with that technology. Well, thank thank you also for applying for these licenses, and it's it's nice that actually within a month's time we've we're picking up several taxi cab agencies. Mm -hmm. It's very good to see. And in fact, actually, we were very concerned when we lost one of the larger agencies, and it's nice that you're picking up that that flag. So, thank you. Councilor Freeman Daniels. Can you comment on how convenient it is to have a business headquartered in Ward 3 on Con Street? <laughs> <laughs> the convenience of it is the Green Cap was the only company that actually had walk in service. You could walk into the office if you cannot communicate with any other company. If they're all busy, you can actually walk in and wait. When Green Cap closed, nobody else has one. Now we do right around the corner from where Green Cap was, right around the corner from the bus terminal. Got a large office, you know, seating capacity of at least six. Well, that's because we have six chairs. We, once we get more, <laughs> we can seat more, and you know, we can offer a safe waiting place, dry waiting place in the rain for people while they're trying to get a cab. Excellent, thank you. Are there any other questions, uh, meeting or otherwise? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Well, thank you both, and I'll ask then for the council's. Uh, 
determination on this. All those in favor of approving the license say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck. Okay, so that completes the licenses on this evening's agenda. Uh, I will now recess uh, the regular meeting and the finance committee and ask the clerk to call the roll of the finance committee. Present. Here. Present. Here. Okay. I just need to move over to the agenda. Okay, so the first item on the finance committee agenda uh, we have financial order. This is an FY 2012 uh, budgetary transfer, uh, $40,500. Uh, 40, Upon the recommendation of the mayor of the finance committee, order that the following FY 2012 budgetary transfers be and hereby are made. Uh, uh, essentially, it's public safety dispatch uh, PNS um, transferring to PNS. Uh, uh, public safety dispatch O&M replacement equipment uh, and then from general uh, liability insurance O&M to the legal O&M uh, $20,500 for the total $40,000 and $500. Move to recommend. Second. Okay, so it's been made in, <coughs> in uh, finance committee and again these are some of the end of year transfers uh, that, uh, that are required. We're allowed before July 15th to make these uh, uh, transfers and the um, finance director's report goes into detail about uh, the need in the, um, in the public safety dispatch center there's uh, there was the need to replace their uninterrupted power supply or UPS device uh, which is uh, designed to protect against uh, power failures and electrical surges uh, they have had that that unit needs urgent replacement so they have some funding available in their PNS line item that they'd like to move over into O&M to be able to make that purchase. Excuse uh, me. In 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 the camp active campaign of trying to eliminate uh, acronyms okay. for for purpose of explanation, so sure. people understand operations and management and, 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 and uh, personnel services. Thank you. Um, are the uh, two acronyms? Those are the two primary um, parts of uh, departmental budgets. Um, so, uh, and then the second one is for a transfer of $20,500. Uh, $20, uh, this uh, would be to uh, cover the legal, final legal cost for FY12 of $217,500. Um, and that allows us again to close out the year. I will note because this is this, uh, in this two week window of the first uh, till July 15th, um, if this does get recommended to the full council, we'll be requesting uh, two readings on it in order so that it can be completed before July uh, 15th. Uh, so that's the background. Are there any questions in Finance Committee or otherwise? Councilor? Yes, Mayor. Um, on the legal budget at 20500 mm -hmm. and apparently this is has something to do with explaining the last five years of the legal cost we just showed that on a memo uh, in the memo just to show you um, what the totals have been over the last five years um, uh, and and the average of the last five years has been two hundred and six thousand seven hundred and seventy seven is what w was what the city has spent on legal uh, fees and we gave we listed the five years themselves and you can see it sort of goes up and down mm -hmm. um, I think as I noted the last at the last council meeting we've been involved um, in some uh, in collective bargaining and so that has contributed to this as well as uh, as part of my new administration, we've been uh, attempting to look at some outstanding legal issues and try to, uh, City Solicitor Seawald has been working with me to try to go through some of those issues and seek resolution. So I think that's probably what represents uh, uh, where the budget has been. So again, this is only, this is for the entire fiscal year, um, but I can just say for, for the first six months at least that part of my administration, uh, that probably accounts for some of the, some of the expenses. Any other questions in finance? Okay, so on the matter of this transfer in finance committee, um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. 
Uh, the next item in Finance Committee, uh, this is um, upon the recommendation of the Mayor and the Finance Committee, order that the sum of $250,000 be and hereby is transferred from the undesignated fund balance to the FY 2013 capital plan. Move to recommend. Second it. Second. Okay. And again, uh, as is outlined in the um, in the finance director's uh, memo, uh, we are at this point where uh, any remaining funds in the FY12 budget, um, we have an opportunity to transfer them to cover certain expenses, or in this case, we are proposing to put them into uh, the undesigned, uh, put essentially put them into um, use in capital. Uh, plan for FY 2013. I think, as I indicated in a budget message, um, our our sort of our design was not to fund the budget with free cash, but to hopefully utilize some of that free cash to be able to fund a capital plan. So uh, we're going to take this portion of it and move it into FY 2013, um, and hopefully begin our capital improvement process over the summer into the. Uh, kicking off in the early fall and and try to fund some <coughs> programs through the, through this cash capital account counselor yes so the free cash goes away at the end of the physical year correct exactly and then we have to wait for it to get certified again which could be December it could be January and so this is a way for us to um, have that money available it's expressly put in for capital improvement projects, which will still have to come back to you for votes and everything like that, but at least it puts it in there for us so that we can actually have a capital program, albeit modest, uh, for, for FY 2013. Okay, thank you. Any other questions in Finance Committee? Okay. Um, hearing none, all those in favor of recommending say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Okay, the next item um, is uh, it's a financial order. Uh, this is upon the recommendation of the Mayor and the Finance Committee. Ordered that the $74,678.34 of funds remaining from the FY11 Capital Plan Project entitled Eunice Server Migration, approved by the City Council on September 16, 2010, be re reprogrammed for the purposes of funding ongoing technology upgrades, including email conversion to Google Apps and a comprehensive study of the city's MIS infrastructure and staffing. Move Sorry. to recommend. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, some of you know um, we experienced a bit of an email glitch. Uh, I believe it was Thursday, June 21st, uh, late in the day. Um, and uh, our, we, we've been, we, we have a local network that our, our city employees function on. Um, and in this case, the uh, uh, server uh, with regard to our, that manages our email system became corrupted um, and uh, was no longer functioning. Um, so we made the decision, or I'm, I guess I made the decision to uh, migrate that system away from the server-based system to a cloud-based system, uh, and we contracted through um, an approved uh, vendor uh, to move the system to Google Apps uh, for government. Uh, and as you may remember in the FY13 budget and in my budget address, one of the other initiatives that that budget addresses was a, mic a similar migration from a server-based use of Munis to a cloud-based uh, version of Munis. So in going through some of our approved capital plan projects, one of the ones where we had some additional funding left over was this Munis server migration project where the anticipated funds had not uh, not all been needed. And so what we're asking for basically is they stay in the capital um, plan uh, allocated to MIS, but that we uh, essentially retitle them or reprogram them so that we can use them for other initiatives that we want to put forward, including paying for this um, Google Apps conversion, um, as well as I am, um, I am having now in the first six months under undergone or endured, or I'm not quite sure what the term is, several of these kinds of glitches, um, it's raised a concern about uh, our, our overall IT infrastructure, our staffing, 
um, issues around uh, uh, whether we can be doing a better job collaborating across the across city departments across uh, city and school and so one of the things I'm I'm uh, looking at is uh, is bringing in an outside consultant to take a look at and give us some recommendations um, you may remember that we worked with the Collins Center for Public Policy at UMass. They provide all kinds of municipal consulting services. Uh, they did consulting work on the charter. They've done a series of these um, IT um, studies uh, for communities where they sort of go through and look at your infrastructure and look at your staffing and um, look at the size, of the number of employees, et cetera, and come back with some recommendations about the kinds of what kind of a system or, or what kind of infrastructure we should be looking at. Um, so that's one of the things I'd like to, to look at. So that's what the request <coughs> is. There's actually no, um, this has already been a, approved as part of the capital plan, but we want to essentially reprogram the funds to stay within MIS, but repurpose it for these other functions. Councilor. Um, you have any sense of projected costs on uh, on the transfer of this, uh, uh, the transfer to the cloud system is at least for the email process. Yeah, the Google Apps actually, um, it's a it's a little bit tricky to compare because you're in some ways you're a little bit of apples and oranges. Um, you have m much more kind of hardware costs on the network based side, um, but we sort of did a did a tried to do a calculation. The one year uh, cost of moving into um, uh, to the Gmail uh, system is is thirteen thousand. Essentially, cost us thirteen thousand to do it. Um, it uh, and you have to keep in mind that 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 includes full archival, et cetera. Under the current system, uh, the, the prior system, we had to pay for um, uh, we had to pay for all the licenses for the Exchange server. We had to pay for the spam firewall, which we had to separately provide and protect our server. Uh, we had to uh, set up a separate email archive uh, server to, to provide an archive and backup for our main server. Um, and so uh, looking, and then we also have to essentially replace the server every three years or on a rotating replacement basis. So in terms of looking at it over the three-year costs, um, we estimate that the, th the three-year costs of the prior system was about $79,370, uh, the three-year cost of the old system. Uh, the new system, the Google solution, over the same three years uh, is going to cost $38,685. So it's actually over $40,000 uh, savings moving to the, uh, to the, to the Gmail system. Um, it and, and you kind of have to look at it that way because that's the only way you can really build in the hardware costs and the replacement costs. And again, and the other sort of intangible here is the um, is the staff time uh, devoted to dealing with server problems like the one we experienced. Um, so that's another sort of intangible that's difficult to calculate. Well, I I had the benefit of being the last qualifier for a, a, a on the license that was remaining for an email address which hasn't worked for three months now just for the record for anyone that's sending me angry emails to my council email address I apologize I have not responded because I haven't seen it but the uh, with these but these are open-end licenses as I understand right now every counselor now will have we will have an email address a city email address for dedicated emails for, to that extent you don't need to, but th these are open end. We don't need to get licenses for emails well, at this point. Well, the, the the format that they use there is a there's a u per user uh, part okay. built into this system, um, and so uh, we do have to give them certain number of users and tell them what the email address is. We did actually uh, when we did this transition, we allocated enough licenses so the full city council could all, all have these if they chose to. And that's included in your projected that's cost on this projected cost. It's about, um, it's, it's, it's about 43, it's 43 dollars and 60 cents a user, uh, for these, uh, for these accounts. Per year. Um, per user. Yeah. Per year. Uh, exactly. Yes. Um, so that's, uh, that's how we've, um, that's how it's calculated. So, we do have enough. We we can add capacity if we want to. The other piece is the archival piece, uh, which has been another area that's been that I've uh, been struggling with because we now um, now that emails become more prolific, 
we get public records requests, and sometimes they're public requests from five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago. Um, and so uh, it's then it becomes even more critical that you don't have server failures and server problems that you lose that data. Um, so that data, uh, we have a separate archival contract that is you know guaranteed <coughs> up, et cetera, uh, as well. That's part of that pr package. Also, two critical features on 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 these systems are one is security and two actually transparency the ability for the public to have clearer and more direct access to documents to to processes now that that's not at this phase but is that what you're anticipating doing later well, we do have we have enabled the uh you know the calendar function and at, and i think the docs function is, is the google docs is function as well so um so there, it's it's essentially for anyone who uses Gmail or Google in the, at home, it's essentially the same thing. It's just a it's just a it's um, it's set up particularly for for governmental users and frankly large any businesses for that matter. And I've since heard from several people in the community who said, "Oh yeah, my business or my nonprofit, we moved all our stuff to that." Smith College last year moved all of its email system to Gmail. It's actually free for educational uses. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, and, a, and a number of you know, large cities like Los Angeles have moved. State whole states have moved their email system uh, to this. So it's we're not sort of uh, breaking new territory here. Well, I, I understand that yeah. that, and in fact, the Defense Department is somewhat in control of of uh, the security for these systems, which of course might give people pause on some level. But the fact that. But the fact that every transaction that we commit is a public document and 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 available, we don't have to be worried about being exposed by the the government because we have to be. Mm -hmm. But there's issues about privacy concerns. There's also issues I mean, as a citizen. But there's also but the security is critical. I think in that and a number of people express concerns about vesting, transitioning to a new a new type of technology, which is relatively new. It's not all that new. But cloud storage is daunting for some folks and you, you you feel fairly comfortable with with the security that that Google is offering for the for the server I do and you know the folks that I've talked to have said really you know the anyone who could you know hack into a cloud server could hack into your network server so it's you know you're fighting the same battle um, it's just you know it's it's sort of David versus Goliath I mean we've got a s small city relatively small staff um, uh, they have teams of people that are that are dealing with this stuff 24/7 and and uh, dealing with new viruses and new malware and all that stuff all the time. Um, and so, you know, again, I, I think it's I, I feel very confident, and I you know, can also say as a as a Gmail user myself for many many years, I've never lost an email, never been hacked, never you know had a service disruption for that matter. So I feel fairly confident with it. Counselors. Um, something that isn't intangible will probably work. Uh, that's also <laughs> a very important feature in any uh, in any system. Yeah, you're right. Uh, you're right. And and I actually you know logged in for the first time and it worked and uh, and it's still it's working. Been working. Yes. And uh, so yeah, we've it's been working well. There's obviously been a little bit of a learning curve for folks who are using a different inter you know used to using a different email interface. They'll have to adjust to that, but. Um, I think in the long run it, it makes sense, and I know that the superintendent. I've talked to him; uh, they're looking at moving the school department over as well, um, as uh, because again it, they have an older email server system, and for the same reasons. So, so logistically, if if counselors um, do take advantage of uh, this dedicated email. Um, it seems that, you know it would make sense to coordinate that in some way so that then new, the new addresses could be published on the city council page, which is the location that citizens go to to locate the address. Um, and then typically, I, I guess you just either have a separate place to look at those or forward them to your other usual email. Yeah, the um, the way. Uh uh, yeah, I th believe if you contact MIS, they've already got an account for you. They've got a password for you, and you can go ahead and set that up and and use it. And obviously, Mary can update the site accordingly for folks who want to do that. And um, and you know, there are ways that you can set it up to forward to your 
other email accounts and you can your email uh, interface can bring in your Gmail account etc so well, I guess what I mean is uh, under your hot topics on the page mm -hmm. I, I know you've been talking about the cloud and all that but maybe a reference to um, to new contact information sure. for counselors you know might be helpful if exactly definitely yep. counselor yes um, what would you say that the cost would be for the comprehensive study of the city's MIS infrastructure and staffing <clears throat> I think it's a great idea but I'd like to know what you think it yeah I've, I've um I've taken a look at some other studies that have been done in some other cities and I've talked to the folks uh, we actually had a conference call that that uh, didn't didn't happen but we were going to be discussing some of the more of the details of it um, I'm assuming it's in the range of uh, uh, 20 to thirty thousand um, uh, dollars and again I mean I, I as I've said to some folks who've asked me about this I mean we're we're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars doing uh, sort of long-term inventories of our water infrastructure of our sewer infrastructure of our road infrastructure and I would submit that our IT infrastructure is every bit as critical in terms of the services we deliver the information that we handle the our ability to communicate with constituents with our uh, I mean so I, I feel that it's as equal part of our city infrastructure um, particularly when it has the capacity to save time and money and so I think it's a it's a wise investment given that I don't think we've ever done this type of study um, at least in my knowledge or memory so I think it's long overdue um, and I would obviously come back to the council and, and, and update you on the progress and on what anything we decide to move forward with on that so. I was just curious because we have the five colleges and are we actually looking at like interns coming in because they do get accredited for doing like this type of work or anything if you need research or anything like that and cities do look at the colleges and they do take interns and in to go ahead and do studies and so forth I was yeah. just wondering about I that. think yeah and certainly we uh, you know I've I'm I'm have some interns working in my office right now I think the the thing about it is the um, sort of the municipal IT is a sort of a is somewhat unique and specialized and because of the systems like Eunice because uh, which is unlike any other program you've got all these payroll programs and so um, it would be if I were gonna it would be helpful to have someone who understands municipal uh, technology needs um, we've got a lot of special uh, you know the assessors use special software that's only you know specialized for assessing in municipalities uh, so uh, there's a school reporting software there's all these kinds of things that are fairly specialized so that would be the one concern I'm sure we could bring in people who are knowledgeable and could give us some good advice but in terms of the specialized stuff I think that would be the concern yeah okay thank you counselor I uh, this is a similar comment to the counselor from uh, Ward 6 I, I am not sure that <coughs> So my understanding is that this order would reprogram uh, the city to spend money on what it's already going to spend money on, right? The Google Apps conversion. Well, we were going to spend that money to um, uh, migrate our Munis server to another Munis server. Uh, we've now disbanded that idea, and because we're not going to move it to another server, so this is some additional capital money that's unspent. So have we? I mean, has the city <laughs> has the city paid Google yet, or will it be paying it from this account? Uh, we have. Uh, well, we yes, we will be paying it. We will be from paying this account. From this okay. account, exactly. So so there's some we're going to lose. You know, some of this dollars, some of these dollars are going to go to pay for what we've already bought. Exactly. But. So that's fine with me um, because I do think you probably it was probably a good decision. Uh, the other, though, the comprehensive study bothers me a little bit because you know I know we have we do have a rich talent of of uh, software and IT professionals that live in the city and live around the city, mm -hmm. and um, I I mean I've I've got I get emails from one or two uh, regularly, and um, you know not to to I, when we did the Collins Center. Uh, to have them redraft our charter they uh, we first started with a local group that wasn't maybe experts it was uh, it was it was the uh, charter redrafting committee that uh, or charter redrafting 
um, it's the one that you that the charter you review committee yeah the charter review committee and that was that leveraged our local expertise and uh, then we moved to the actually paying a uh, professional I just I feel as though we're missing opportunity if we don't draw from or try to draw from the, the free resources that we have now by creating a committee to do that and I know that that's part of that was part of your uh, goal as as a as a as mayor is to create a technology advisory committee so I I, I'm not comfortable actually approving the comprehensive study uh, dollars for this comprehensive study. I'll vote against it uh, unless uh, I vote for it later after mm -hmm. hearing getting a report from you from the technology advisor committee or directly to the council f from a technology advisor. And I can respond to that that I did I did call for a website and technology committee um, and I've received some applications. That's been one of the slower ones um, folks applying for primarily. One of my main goals on that was to was to really look at our website, the city's website, um, and look at whether it could be modernized or should be modernized, and then also look at um, whether we could be using other technologies like you know Twitter and Facebook and all those other kinds of um, things as well as it. Um, uh, and I'm hoping to get a couple. I'm in discussions with a couple of other people that I've encouraged to imply, apply to that, and we're certainly going to do that. Um, I do think this is a little bit different, um, uh, but that's something we can discuss. Yeah, Councilor. Well, actually, to that point, I mean, I mean, citizens donating their time to analyzing and discussing the public document that will serve as their constitution is a little different than asking someone to come and consult, basically rendering their services for free. I don't think that's fair to ask of somebody who's, who who does this professionally to come in professionally. Uh, offer the services for free and I'd, I'm, I'd be pleased if someone did offer that but then also of course there are all the other sorts of subset problems that come with, associated with that I don't think I think this is fairly generic enough to to actually call for a comprehensive study regardless of who provides it I think that I think it's appropriate to to still allocate that money uh, counselor uh, I'm not sure I didn't see who had the order doesn't matter to me. Okay. Councillor Adams. I was going to say, I mean, as far as the Charter Review Committee, I think we did have some people on there who do that for profession, who did it for free. For example, Attorney Seawalt, he's been a municipal attorney for a very, very long time and ended up becoming our city solicitor afterwards. So I'm not entirely sure that, uh, that, that we couldn't uh, continue to try to, to, to do what you're doing, and, and hopefully maybe there will be more interest in it. I guess my concern is I feel like this is a fairly urgent uh, issue, just given what I've seen in the first six months. And I feel like <coughs> um, I just feel like it's it's requires uh, we can. I certainly want. I'm committed to doing that technology and website committee that could play an advisory role. But in terms of what I'm asking, um, is a little is a, a little bit more specialized, I think, and needs to be a little bit more organized. Um, that's just my opinion on it. Um, so that, that, that's obviously the council's decision on this one. So, council, oh, this is this is not only urgent now. I mean, if, if Councillor Carney and yourself and Councillor Robarge will remember back in 2006 when we first joined the council, we had an organizational meeting. I think I mentioned then that a comprehensive look at our technology was a really important thing and that was six years ago so it is it is really important and I'm I would completely support um, putting together a committee to uh, keep an eye on our technology but it would be really really important to have a professional and comprehensive review and recommendations <coughs> ready for that committee when it finally gets formed because as we can see uh, we're, we're st starting to have technology that doesn't work now and we need to make we need to make these changes. We've already migrated Munis to an out, out of house source. We're going to take our email out of house. Um, I think it's so important that we should start right away to commission a study. So when the committee gets gets put together, they're going to have something to to study and to work with, and and to act on recommendations that are that are in place. Uh, having been on the f the first charter committee that recommended that we uh, do a comprehensive review. It was really important that we had a professional to sort of uh, set the scope of it, set the time frame, do the legwork, and bring it together. And I think that was very effective, and I think it would be very effective here. Uh, and 
it is, you know, that's a great thing about technology. It's sort of a finite thing. It is what it is. You can do what you can do given what the technology is today. So I think a competent consultant is going to be able to look at our framework and our activities and our people and what we're doing and how we're doing it in the light of what is state of the art, which probably isn't us right now and be able to lay things on the table that competent professionals from the colleges, from industry, uh, volunteers that just happen to live in town and be consultants are going to go, you know, absolutely, that's plain as can be. But it would be great to have that in place because it is a lot to ask volunteers. It's fine to ask volunteers that are competent to say, do you all concur that this is the right direction to go in? But to ask them to try and do it themselves is very difficult. I mean, remember our zoning revisions committee, we had a gentleman on that that did it professionally and he, he said hey I you know as a volunteer I can't do this but I could review a professional's work and and say yeah this is correct given what the technology is and move on it so I'd, I'd encourage us to get going as quickly as we can because we certainly need this to do this before we pop another hole somewhere and something else stops starts not working Councilor. I'd also like to uh, support this just to get the ball rolling and also to take advantage of the uh, great resource we have in the Collins Center being so close and being um, also so specially focused in government uh, um, you know uses like this especially uh, you know something that would help us and their focus on directly on what we need is something that would uh, really help us right now I think it's small money for what we could get Councilor LaBarge and then Councilor. I'd like to move the motion. I think we This is in Finance Committee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, did you have a one other? I did, I did have a comment on the. Okay. Uh, would you yield to Councilor Dwight or do you want to? Okay. Oh. <laughs> uh, and not to up you, uh, want to up you, Councilor Murphy, but actually 12 years ago, I called for a comprehensive review. Sure we are actually, we're, we are beyond crisis at this point. We have literally, we're running on duct tape and and hopes and wishes and we are and so the urgency has been there for some time and now it is actually we have now pushed it to the point we're beyond state-of-the-art we're unless there's a state-of-the-art of dysfunction which we are pretty much at the and I think the distinction it's important to make that that what we're talking about is an infrastructure review and, and, a, and, and we want comprehensive understanding of what's the best way to proceed and I do believe that there is talent here in the community and I wouldn't discourage any participation in that regard but I'd like to have someone by contract by pay to be very responsible to be accountable for the process and the review because I think that's in our best interest ultimately because we, we what stands at risk here is 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 actually a complete failure literally of the system that we would we would not be able to function as a city government if this system doesn't is not able to survive and sustain so I I, I am I, I will vote in favor of this okay so this is in finance committee um, uh, so all those in favor of uh, recommending say aye aye, aye. opposed any abstentions Okay, so this will come out to the full council. Okay, um, so I have a, a couple of late file orders that we're going to be bringing forward this evening, uh, which are along the same lines of the um, uh, that that window before July fifteenth, in which we're able to utilize FY. 12 funds um, and so first to set the stage well I'll, I'll, I'll let's go ahead and recommend uh, them and then we can just I can explain what they are there's actually two separate ones uh, but they're sort of related um, the first is upon the recommendation of the mayor and finance committee uh, ordered that uh, fifty seven thousand one hundred and seventy four dollars in the FY 2012 reserve for personnel be transferred to the following FY 2013 salary line items uh, to fund AFSME and NAPIA collective bargaining agreements ratified on July 11th and July 12th, 2012, respectively. Uh, so the this includes, uh, you can read through the um, personal salaries lines. Uh, this is um, 
to the assessor's office, uh, $4,598. To the recreation department, $6,878. Veterans, $2,942. Council on aging, $5,770. Planning, $5,612. Dispatch, $1,366. Central services, $1,354. <coughs> Auditor, $1,320. Treasurer, $860. Collector, $3,317. MIS, $1,002. City Clerk, $922. Building Inspector, $4,873. DPW Administration, $2,863. Uh, DPW Engineering, $10,692. Board of Health, $1,805 for the total of $57,174. Move to approve. Okay. Second. Then, uh, okay. And then can I also ask you to recommend the second or move the other one on so that we can just discuss them since they're interrelated? Um, yes. This is ordered that the, on the recommendation of the mayor and the finance committee, order that the following amounts from FY 2012 salary line items be transferred to FY 2013 salary line items to fund name. AFSME and NAPIA collective bargaining agreements ratified July 9th, 2012, July 11th, 2012, and July 12th, 2012, respectively. Again, reading through those, um, uh, central services, uh, $6,420, highways, uh, $25,283, storm drains, uh, $7,256, cemetery, $2,326, Parks and Recreation, $5,001. Parking Maintenance, $429. Auditor, $1,894. Collector, $1,760. MIS, $1,052. City Clerk, $2,483. Planning, $981. Police, $1,968. Fire, $882. Building Inspector, $2,554. DPW Administration, 1,731. Board of Health, 779. Uh, from the Enterprise Funds, Wastewater Treatment Plant, $19,329. Water General Operators, PNS, $21,073. Water Treatment, PNS, uh, salaries, $16,233. And Landfill, uh, $2,581. Again, uh, this is for a total of one hundred and twenty-two thousand and five dollars. Move to approve. Second. Okay. So, uh, by way of background, as I stated earlier in the meeting, we have a number of open, have had a number of open collective bargaining contracts, um, and we have been trying to work through those. Um, in some cases, uh, we have uh, units that uh, did not have a contract for FY12 or for FY13. Some we had contracts for FY12. Uh, some units we uh, have not had contracts dating back to FY10. Uh, um, I'm, I'm pleased to announce that in the last several days, we've been able to reach agreement uh, with three of our unions on the city side. Um, the first being uh, the uh, AFME unit, which is the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees. That's our primarily our clerical uh, workers in our various city departments. It's about it's 34 members. Um, similarly, uh, we've uh, reached an agreement with the Northampton Association of the Municipal Employees, AIME, uh, which is largely our DPW. That's 60 employees. Um, and then finally, NAPIA, which is our Northampton Administrative and Professional Employees Association, uh, which is 50 members. Um, similarly, we've uh, reached uh, uh, a, an agreement with them as well. Again, this has all sort of crystallized in the last few days. Um, over the literally over the course of the last three days um, and uh, and so what we're asking to do essentially is we have um, this reserve for personnel line item in the FY 12 budget uh, we have a reserve for personnel item um, in, in all of our budgets and essentially it's for collective bargaining and for other personnel issues what we're asking to do is essentially take that money that's in the FY 2012 budget and push it forward to FY 13 so that we can use it uh, to pay for the agreed upon uh, wages that we've agreed to under these new collective bargaining agreements. 
Um, similarly, the, uh, what the other order does is it takes um, some leftover salary that's in, in the FY12 budget um, from various line items. You'll note it's primarily in the DPW, uh, and you'll also remember that in their budget they had a number of positions that were unfilled. Uh, mm -hmm. So we had some excess funding in their P&S line item. We're essentially asking to move it forward, uh, take it from FY12 and move it to FY13. Um, we've checked with the Department of Revenue, and uh, this is an allowable action, provided that you have a uh, signed signed agreements with. Uh, it can't be just perspective that you might have. You actually have to have reached agreement. So, um, as of about four o'clock today, the, the last agreement was uh, <laughs> was ratified and signed. And so, um, I'm asking essentially for the funding authority to be able to fund that uh, those contracts. So uh, that's what the orders are about. I can uh, provide other detail um, if you need them, um, uh, but that's essentially what we're asking. Counselor. I, I'd just like to remark that um, in the past, something like this would have actually been done in executive yeah. session, and I should commend you for the fact that this is now part of the public discussion so the public can actually be aware of what, what is being discussed in the process of collective bargaining. Uh, I, I, I guess it's a different approach, and I, just, I wanted to, these are, I mean, obviously the negotiations themselves are, are confidential and private by law, and, and they've been, you know, I think we've worked, I think both sides have worked in good faith, and, and, uh, and one of the things I talked about when I uh, got elected was I wanted to really work with employees, because I know many of our employees have made sacrifices over the last several years um, during time and out of time. So, we're trying to to address that moving forward. A lot of a lot of these uh, settlements actually uh, are compensating for uh, bargaining units that that accepted zeros for raises for for some period as as. And I will add to, to serve the city that these um, two of these three contracts. Uh, let's see, uh, the name contract um, does uh, stipulate the acceptance of a zero step and a zero cola. 2012, um, as uh, as well as um, trying to think. Uh, no, that that's the only one. The others were the other two units had accepted uh, zero step and zero cola in FY12. It's, it, um, that, the point being that that there there are, <coughs> there are people who work for the city of Northampton who actually stepped up when we were in critical we were in crisis. Definitely. And. Uh, um, you know they were certainly entitled to demand these increases, and they 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 sacrificed in order to uh, accommodate the city's problems. I that I think you should be commended. I think they should be commended. Um, and 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 you know, in lieu of the resolution tonight, this actually. I, I was actually that's thinking it. about that when we were discussing the resolution that it was sort of a good good day all yeah. around in that regard because the city has had a commitment to collective bargaining. And so, and I think the process worked the way it's supposed to work. And uh, again, we're trying to. It's not. It's. Uh, it's not exorbitant. And it's not. It's. But I. Again, I think we're trying to recognize the sacrifices that have been made. So, and also try to provide something modest, which I think all sides were, could come to agreement on across three different units. Councilor, uh, just to clarify, I wasn't sure that I heard you correctly. But did you say that these, uh, these agreement, these tentative agreements have been actually ratified by the members? They have. Okay. Yes. They, uh, there were a series of uh, meetings that were put together over the last several days um, mm -hmm. and that involved information as well as a vote of, uh, of the various units. Um, and so, yeah, so that has happened. Yeah. Councilor, did you have a question? Yeah, can we vote on this? Sure can, unless there's any other questions. I will say, like the other 2012 um, orders, we're going to be needing two readings on these because of the fact that we have to do this by July 15th. So, um, and uh, and I'll just say we do have a couple of uh, a few other outstanding uh, our police and fire contracts are still remain open, and we're trying to work through those. So those would be the remaining ones on the city side. Okay, so all those in favor of recommending these two orders to the full city council say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, so these will come out uh, to the full council. Um, 
So in terms of financial updates, uh, you've received the memo from finance director who, which sort of walks through some of the transfers. Um, obviously we've been discussing uh, closing out of the 2012 budget. Some of the, so there's not much of an update there. Uh, we'll probably, in honest, I think, uh, once we've closed out all these accounts and done all the final accounts payable, that we'll be able to then uh, come to you with sort of a review of how we did in terms of different budget categories and revenue projections, et cetera. Um, in terms of 2013, we're obviously now uh, into FY 2013. The state budget passed. There was not really much of a major differential going forward as uh, the various budgets came forward. Um, so we're going to continue to work um, in 2013 to, to ensure that we stick to that budget and uh, and keep an eye on revenue projections and keep the council apprised of that as we go through the year. Um, I don't know if you have anything to add to any of that. Okay. Uh, do we have any new business in finance committee? Okay. Uh, um, actually, I, I just it just occurred to me that um, one of the one of the other late file orders tonight involves. Um, Sort of the accept the acceptance of a gift, which is oh, yes. property of sorts. That's what so I'm, to I'm wondering we may want to have it come through the property committee, the finance committee first. Um, I think so too. Just given that it's we're accepting something of property and value. We actually have two. You're right. So I think we should probably do those in the property committee since we're talking about um, one of them's on your agenda. The other is a late file. So which, uh, okay, and, okay, the, uh, is this the, okay, so we, um, okay, so I think we, uh, why don't we do, okay, so we have one order that's on the regular agenda, wasn't on the finance agenda, but we should bring it forward. This is, um, this is upon the recommendation of the Transportation and Parking Commission. Um, it's ordered that whereas in 2007, uh, for $2,700, Craig Della Pena, owner of Della Pena's Trailside Realty, commissioned Sam Ostroff to build artistic and durable bicycle corral, in essence, a large bicycle rack that can be placed in an on-street parking spot or elsewhere. And whereas Craig De La Pena offered to donate the bicycle corral to the city, with the only condition being that the city keep it in its current location on Strong Avenue for the 2012 season, and whereas the Transportation and Parking Commission and its Bicycle and Pedestrian Subcommittee recommend that City Council accept this donation, and whereas Central Services is willing to accept custody of the bicycle corral and find appropriate places for use in the future, the Northampton City Council gratefully accepts as gift the donation of the bicycle corral to the City of Northampton Central Services Department in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53A and a half, Gifts of Tangible Personal Property Acceptance. Is there a motion? Move, move to recommend it. Second. Okay. Second. You'll note that there was a slight language change from the original version, and uh, Ms. Madura spotted that there was not the reference to Mass General Law that we've had typically in our other orders like this, so she's added that in the corrected version that you have. Um, I don't know if anyone from Transportation and Parking wants to speak to this. Ms. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Uh, we discussed this at um, one, of our, one of our June meetings, and uh, we um, we agreed to recommend accept that the city accept it, but we didn't have any idea about which department. Uh, so that was left to the administration. The administration found a department willing to take it, which is good. Uh, and uh, I hope that um, this, the councilors vote to accept this. Uh, it's going to be, you know, it's a, it's a it's a very nice piece artistically, and also, uh, you know, because it's portable, it'll move around the city and uh, hopefully be um, a good way to bird dog for permanent locations uh, for uh, bicycle parking. Thank you. Councilors. Um, I'd like to recognize Mr. Fiden. I have a question for him about this. Sure. I, uh, there's a second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 And, and, and maybe, maybe Councilor Freeman Daniels knows the answer to this, but um, the condition was it stay where it is. And it's in a parking place on Strong Avenue which I, I went by checked it out last night. It's bagged. Who's been paying for the bag 
for the space to keep it in. Trust me. Would they continue to do that through the rest of the season? No. Assuming we get a second vote in August, they would stop. All right. So if we take it, we agree to leave it in the space at no charge. What's it cost to buy a space for a month? I don't know what they're paying. It was five dollars last year when the rates went up to seven fifty. That's what the rate would be to bag it. I don't know if they have any sort of special. That's a day. That's a day. I'm sorry. Yes. So, but if it went up, so, so let's say it's seven bucks a day. Well, so Thursdays are free. No, they're not. <laughs> they were. They were free. Well, well 50 bucks. we build them anyway. I mean, I think we probably <laughs> did. So there is a co there is a cost to it to us. So we get it free, but for let's say we second reading, so September, October, the thing usually left in November. So when did it go away for the winter? Uh, End of October, early November. 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 So it's only it's only a couple months. Yeah. Um, all right. I would you know I have I have no objection to this. I just encourage us to try and find a place to park it in the next season that isn't a parking space because you know Pulaski there's places to put it that aren't parking spaces and don't reduce our revenue by that we should still make it very useful to to people riding bikes it's a nice safe place to like lock up bikes but it doesn't necessarily have to occupy a parking space to accomplish its goal so um, Councilor Freeman Daniels had a question just yeah quick back of the envelope uh, um, calculations it's you know maybe six hundred dollars between the second reading and the end of the year yeah so it's, uh, so I it's think reasonable it's the costly and also I, I agree with you um, one good thing about it is that it's not much wider than uh, a lot of places where mm -hmm. that you could do off off of the street and it would still serve you could move it to various neighborhoods and find non-parking place spots for it would still accomplish its goal and yeah I cost I, us yeah. I don't think that the uh, central services will be doing a lot of bagging uh, on, with this and um, I hope that actually central services and the transportation parking commission will set up some sort of schedule about where it will go and so on yes thank you are there any other questions about this particular um, gift acceptance okay so in finance well property committee finance committee acting as the property committee all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed okay uh, the next item uh, is uh, uh, will be a late file and it was um, it's upon the recommendation of Councillor uh, Eugene Tacy, who is on vacation uh, in a way today but yes we've been in contact with him today about this um, this is ordered that whereas the Trinity Park Fund has offered to donate approximately eleven thousand dollars of construction materials for the renovation of the Trinity Park Fountain the Northampton City Council gratefully accepts the donations as gifts to the City of Northampton of materials from the Trinity Park Fund for the purposes of renovating the Trinity Park Fountain in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A and a half. Move to recommend acceptance. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Councilor. I'm sorry, uh, the members of the committee should speak. No, that's fine. Uh, it, doesn't the DPW have a revolving fund that would accept this? Why? why? Uh, we did some research about this, and um, because it's a, we asked Joe Cook, our chief procurement officer, to look at it, and uh, ultimately any gift like this um, still has to be accepted by the city council, was his opinion, um, given the size <laughs> and value of it. Um, it'll still flow to the, you know, the DPW will use it, it'll go toward uh, you know the actually what's actually going to happen here is it's actually the materials themselves are being put down so they are yeah is that the difference because it's materials versus money because the that's, city that accept the, gift money all the time and that is the difference um, because we're actually it's actually uh, underground pipe and concrete and all of these other things and so there's been this private fundraising effort they're gonna write the checks for all the materials for the project um, and they're being gifted to the city as part of the reconstruction project. So it's, yeah. Um, I'm in favor of this, but I have, I have some concerns associated with it. Uh, one is that the labor is being donated by Councilor Tacy, which is he'd probably not be able to vote on this if he were here. So, um, and that's fine, but I, I think it's important that um, the cost be itemized uh, for and I understand this is a go to to parts and and not labor 
um, but th there'd be a, a, a clear accounting on it just so that everything's above board. And the other concern is um, a butter notification. Now, there, 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 are a variety, and there are a number of houses that are around Triangle Park, and maybe this has already been done, and Council Murphy could probably speak to that better, but th the, the butter should be notified that there will be a construction project that, uh, that it would I mean, give some sense of what that, what that entails and what it will look like in the end, because clearly we, uh, and I know Councilor Tacey would be the first person to call for this, the, to the accountability to the, the neighbors and accountability for the money. So. Um, I can just I can say in response to that we did talk to Councillor Tacey today via phone, and he indicated that he had gone to the Board of Public Works, which ultimately controls the park, and he had submitted some draft designs, but they had not yet approved any final design that they are still looking at. They want more complete engineering drawings and full engineer drawings of what's actually being proposed. So my sense would be that the Board of Public Works will most likely have to vote to approve said design so I think that hopefully will provide that opportunity for outreach but we can certainly communicate that to the Board of Public Works I, I wish you would that'd be great definitely uh, any other counselors wishing to speak on this okay so again this is an acceptance uh, gift and this will require uh, suspension of rules um, in the, f in, the other in piece the that counselor um, Tacey had asked me to communicate is that they're hoping to do get the construction completed over the summer so that it's done by Labor Day and so he, uh, the concern about if, if he could get two readings on this then he could they could move forward with the design process etc and the construction could happen as opposed to waiting for the August meeting for a second reading and then there's only a few weeks left in August so that was his request which I am conveying to the council uh, but that's for later in the meeting. All those in favor of recommending say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so that will move forward. Um, and that concludes the, the new business. Um, did you have a question? I, I was going to ask if I could request a brief recess after you adjourn for finance. Certainly. So I would entertain a motion to adjourn. to adjourn. Second. So, okay, all those in favor of adjourning finance say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so we'll adjourn. Uh, now we've moved back out into the regular finance, uh, out into the regular city council meeting, and I'll call for a five minute recess. Welcome back to the July 12th, 2012 meeting of the Northampton City Council. We're retur returning from a brief recess, and we are now back out in the regular meeting, and we'll continue on uh, with the agenda. Uh, the next item is the uh, reports of committees. We have uh, minutes from the Committee on Social Services and Veterans <laughs> Affairs for April 9, 2012 and May 21st, 2012. Transportation and Parking Commission, May 15th, 2012. Committee on Public Safety, June 4th, 2012. Committee on Appointments and Evaluation, June 11th, 2012. To accept as a group? Um, can I, excuse me, I, I, I didn't get your reference before, but I, Councilor Freeman Daniels has actually asked to separate out the transportation and parking. Uh, move to accept all, all the others with the exception of transportation and parking. Okay. Second. Um, okay, is there any discussion on all of those except the TPC minutes. Okay, hearing none. All those in favor of accepting say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. And now if someone could move the TPC I minutes. Move, I move the acceptance of the TPC minutes. Is there a second? Second. Okay, Councillor? Just um, to be frank, honestly, I, I don't read all of these all the time. And uh, I happen to be looking through this one and I saw on page 406 that uh, there's just a small amendment that we need to, that I have to correct. It. Ms. Bruce proposed raising rates from 30 to 45. And just strike rather than 60. That was not her. That's not what she said. So uh, that's my amendment. Okay. So um, move as amend. I'll accept the amendment. Though. Second. And the second. So Friendly. there's Friendly. been a motion made and seconded to accept. make that accept amendment as a to the minutes um, of the Transportation and Parking Commission. Um, any other corrections or, or issues? I'm not. I'm going to stop reading so that you know, <laughs> yeah, don't come up with more. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. That shouldn't be a problem any going further. Okay. All right. So all those in favor of accepting the Transportation and Parking Commission minutes of May 15th as amended say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Um, before we move on, I wanted to uh, 
uh, appoint an, uh, Councillor Adams and Councillor Labarge to the Enrollment Committee for this evening. Okay, uh, the next item, the presentation, we have none. Um, so we have financial orders. These are the ones we just discussed. Uh, well, some of them we just discussed. We have one that's coming back to you on second reading. Uh, this is upon the recommendation of the Recreation Commission, the Conservation Commission, and Councilor Maureen T. Carney, ordered that whereas the Open Space and Recreation Plan 2011-2017 recommends expanding the Connecticut River Greenway, including a Connecticut River Boathouse, and whereas Lane Construction Corporation has agreed to donate the land necessary to expand the Connecticut River Greenway to create a Connecticut River Boathouse, river access, and boat docks, uh, and whereas the Massachusetts land grant provides up to 64% reimbursement for improvements of recreation areas and, it's, and is a reimbursement program which requires that the city demonstrate that it has all the funds necessary to acquire and improve recreation properties prior to state reimbursement, and now therefore be it ordered that the city council authorizes the city of Northampton acting through its recreation commission to acquire by gift or purchase approximately 6.5 acres more or less adjacent to the Connecticut River now or formerly owned by Lane Construction Corporation and any related access utility and other easements under the provisions of Mass General Law chapter 45 section 14 as it may hereafter be amended and other Massachusetts statutes relating to public parks and playgrounds and that the Recreation Commission be authorized to grant conservation restrictions as defined in Mass General Law Chapter 184, Section 31 in the above land and to grant any easements and ground leases that support recreation and a community boathouse and that City Council appropriates and authorizes the City Treasurer with the approval of the Mayor to borrow 625000 over 15 years under Mass General Law Chapter 44B, Section 11, Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 8C, or any other enabling authority for the purpose of acquisition by gift or purchase and improvement of public parks, playgrounds, boathouse, trails, and docks on said property, and, and the said Recreation Commission be authorized to file on behalf of the City of Northampton any and all applic applications deemed necessary for grants and or reimbursements from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts deemed necessary under the Park Act, Chapter 933, Acts of 1977, as amended, and or any others in any way connected with this, the scope of this article, and the Northampton Recreation Commission be authorized to enter into all agreements and execute any and all instruments as may be necessary on behalf of the City of Northampton to effect said purchase. Move to approve. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion on this one? Okay. Council. The only the only comment I got on this one was um, somewhere in the line the lines when it was discussed last time somebody was talking about a four to six million dollar boathouse. I just want to note that it no. there's nothing like that in this at all for the people who called me. Um, no four million dollar boathouse. Okay. It, it, it should be noted, in fact, there's no boathouse at all. At all. <laughs> it is uh, accepting gift of the land that a boathouse could go on and people hope will go on. But we are not subsidizing a boathouse. We are not authorizing the subsidizing of a boathouse. Councilor Freeman Daniels. I would just reiterate what I said last time, which is that I'm very I'm supportive of this. I just find that the vague language around granting conservation restrictions to I, I would prefer to have it be more clear about who exactly will be holding the restrictions and what the criteria will be. I'm going to vote for this and right, but I believe in future we need greater clarity regarding conservation restrictions, who will hold them and and how they'll be executed. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Okay. I will ask the clerk to call the roll. Councilor yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Aye. Councilor Lavarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Short? Yes. Okay, so that is adopted on second reading. The next item is uh, upon the recommendation of the Mayor and the Finance Committee, ordered that the following FY 2012 budgetary transfers be in hereby are made. This is a total of 40500 and it's $20,000 uh, for uh, public safety uh, O&M uh, and uh, 20500 for legal. Move to approve. Second. Okay. There's been a motion made and seconded. Any discussion on this? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Move to suspend rule for second reading. OK. 
Okay. So there's been a motion made. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of uh, suspending rules say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Rules are suspended. I would entertain a motion on second. So move. Second. Second. Okay. There's been a motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. All right. Uh, the next is uh, upon the recommendation of the mayor and the finance committee order that the sum of 250,000 be and hereby is transferred from the undesignated fund balance to the FY 2013 capital plan. So moved. Second it. Okay. Um, any discussion on this on first reading? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any Suspense abstention? 14. Okay. Second. Second. There's been a motion made and seconded to suspend rules. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Rules are suspended. Move uh, approval. Second. 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 So there's been a motion made and seconded on second reading. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So that's been approved. Okay, the next item is uh, upon the recommendation of the mayor and the finance committee ordered that the $74,678.34 of funds remaining from the FY11 capital plan project entitled Munis Server Migration approved by the City Council on September 2010 be reprogrammed for the purposes of funding ongoing technology upgrades including email conversion to Google Apps and a comprehensive study of the city's MIS infrastructure and staff. Move to approve. Second. Second. And there's an amendment at the desk. Councillor Freeman Daniels. Thank you. Uh, I would like to support the ongoing technology upgrades and email conversion to Google Apps. I just think that the council's jumping the gun about uh, granting a comprehensive study before we've heard from a technology advisory committee. So. Uh, with that in mind, I move that the council amends the, this order to, uh, s to end the uh, sentence after Google Apps and strikes and a comprehensive study of the city's MIS infrastructure and staffing. So there's been a motion to amend. Is there a second? Second. Okay. It's been seconded. Um, so now can I, can I just say one more thing? Sure. I'm not against a comprehensive study of the city's MIS infrastructure and staffing. Uh, in fact, you know, when we're spending hundreds of thousands on our other bits of infrastructure, 20 to 30,000 seems to me very reasonable. A um, few things. One, lots of our systems are in crisis. Lots of them. We're willing to wait months for this study to be concluded. I don't think it's a big deal to wait a few more. Our stormwater system, I think, is in one of those crisis periods. You could say it's held together by hope and duct tape. Uh, and as soon as the study came out, uh, you didn't see the city councilors jumping all over themselves to start funding these problems. So I don't think that that, that term is necessarily the reason to absolutely fund this today. Uh, I think that as far as accountability and open process goes, uh, I concur. I think we do need accountability and open process, but I, I think that we should start at the community level first, use community resources if they're willing to be volunteered. We talk about it all the time here at the council that we have a rich community full of expertise, why not see if we can leverage some of that? If it, if it turns out we can't, or if it turn turns out we can, uh, either in either case, I expect that we'll be spending some money for, some, uh, for some, a particular uh, targeted study. But if we have a group in place, a technology committee in place, uh, they can provide the accountability for the study, uh, and then that will make it an even more open process. So I urge my fellow counselors to accept this amendment so that we can all vote uh, to approve this. Thank you. Councilor. I have a question for the councilor's amendment. And you, you, would you keep the same dollar amount? Because essentially then you'd have the same dollar amount without the comprehensive study. Councilor. Uh, it seems to me that um, you could put a million dollars in it, but if it, it can't, if you can't use it for a comprehensive study, then that's No, I understand. I, I was wondering if you're- Yeah, no, let's keep the same dollar amount. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, just, just a question for the, uh, so um, the amendment would effectively kill the, the order. What counsel? If I could just respond, I, the, we were attempting to put, you know, we were uh, attempting to give some examples of the kinds of things we would do, including those two specific items. Um, so that, uh, yeah, I suppose uh, 
it could that could, that if, if if that were the case, then uh, we would not move forward with the study of of it. Um, if we again, vote, if we approve the amendment, then we don't move forward with the study. Correct. That okay. would be oh, that's okay. that would be oh, the so. that would be. We don't move forward with the financing of the study. So are, we don't I believe what Council Freeman Daniels is calling for is a study of uh, after a fashion. Mm -hmm. right. uh, would be it would be hopefully the beneficence of of good citizens who would donate their time and energy okay. to consulting, but at the same time we would not be funding or financing a study, would, okay. because it wouldn't be it wouldn't be indicated in this language. Councilor Freeman, yes. thank you. I'd like to uh, reply to both those things. I read this order as three parts: one, ongoing technology upgrades; two, conversion to Google Apps; three, a comprehensive study. All I'm, I'm, and I, I've said it before, I'll say it again, I'm not against funding a comprehensive study. I just don't think that the council should do it today. Uh, I think we should fund it. I think we should get a scope of work from a technology advisory committee and then maybe go to the Edwards Collins Center or some, other, or some other group that might have some experience with municipal finance. I mean, I'm sorry, municipal infrastructure for IT. Uh, I just think, so no, this won't kill the, order, it will kill the part of the order that calls for comprehensive study Thank today. Uh, and it still designates, it, it, it's not like I'm suggesting that we cut the 74,000 down to you know, 15,000 or something and put the rest in the general fund. The money will obviously be still in the MIS department and still probably be used for a study once we have a clearer understanding of what we're looking for. Councillor uh, Dwight, and then if, if allowed the opportunity, I'll answer questions or, or respond to anything. The, the order does not call for a comprehensive study today. So um, I think we're splitting hairs here. I don't think what this order does is serve as an exclusivity. It doesn't, um, it doesn't preclude the establishment of a committee and a public contribution and review. So each, and so I think it's superfluous. I think the amendment's superfluous as such because it doesn't call for that order today. That's not one of the itemized things. It's can, can I reply to that? Uh, you most certainly may. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, of course, you're right. Right. So cutting that would mean that there's no comprehensive study, but leaving it in means that whatever happens, however the however the study takes place, uh, it, that can happen without a technology committee or with a technology committee. Like I said before, I'm in favor of a technology committee coming before we fund a study. I'd like to see if the community can offer its resources before we use the, the money that we raise from taxes. So that's why I'm cutting it. Well, to that end, I would suggest that you recommend the establishment of that committee instead of uh, amending and deleting this language. I, not that it's critical. I, clearly, I don't think the merits. Well, maybe the mayor has something to add to this, but I think that that we're talking about two separate things here. You were, were I would just the only thing I would say is just reiterating what I said before is that I I did indicate that I wanted to this was one of the committees I wanted to appoint, and I've appointed two out of the three of those committees and gotten them up and running, and that this has been one of the committees that it's been difficult to find people to volunteer for. I have I've had two or three applications I think. So I think to date in the folder, and so we've had a difficult time. Um, we may need to do a better job. And, I, and again, I don't preclude that that part of what I wanted the committee to look at was a part of the city's infrastructure, the website. Um, I just think that these are not mutually exclusive things that I fully intend to move forward with that. And I'm hoping tonight's discussion may, may elicit more people who want to volunteer. And I also have always said all along that I Part of the reason why we put the website out, why we gave all the information about vacancies was to try to get counselors to encourage constituents to apply. So any help we can get on that would be great. And I'm looking forward to appointing that committee. I guess what I was saying is I feel like there's some immediate things that I really feel like we need to have someone go in and look at. And especially once we're going to have a capital planning process happening in September. So I, I, it's a difference of opinion. I don't think that I, I do think a, a, a committee could look at a study like this. I just it's, it's just the difference between the timing of them. Four, four months ago, I sent out an appeal through a number of social media outlets, Facebook, uh, Paradise City Forum, a number of other communities, asking for 
soliciting, and, and I think I cc'd everybody on the soliciting input from citizens. Exactly. I got no answers. I got none. And 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 I don't. It, what I would do instead of supporting your amendment, I would actually further entreat the public. Who feel that they have the skills set to bring to to participate in this to to come and contact the mayor's office ASAP, because I do I think this is a different level of urgency than, than say the the stormwater issues because those are clear those are being mandated. Mm -hmm. This is and uh, so I don't think I, I think we're not across purposes here necessarily because I agree with you I think that that anything that the public can contribute on this would be highly valued and I would like to see more enthusiasm from the public on this point largely to develop a comprehensive uh, uh, system that now facilitates public access security <coughs> and cross departmental uh, uh, cohesion that doesn't exist now and <coughs> And also a means by which we, the public, can have greater access to that system. I, so I don't. I think it, when I said it was superfluous, it wasn't a criticism. I just actually think it, it is. It, this is not a necessary amendment, ultimately, and, and, and that's where I'll stand on it. I had a couple of other counselors waiting to discuss the amendment, right. so I'll. I'm hearing myself as a counselor from you, Mayor, that this comprehensive study apparently there's some value here and that you want to get onto this so that you want to check to see if that department needs some changes in there or which way or what direction are we going to go in so that's what i'm feeling from you that there is an urgency here to hopefully get this comprehensive study done so i'm going to support that because to me i think it's valuable that the study be done because that's what I'm feeling from you as a mayor, that you need to get somebody in there to see what type of changes need to be made and what direction do we know we need to go in. I know for the past week, week and a half, I had so many city employees tell me the difficulties that they've had with their computers and that. So that is telling us we need to move. There is a big problem. And if I could just respond, I think one of the, I mean, one of the other pieces of the, of this has been just, I mean, there is a cost. Uh, I mean, the product, when Munis went down for three days, exactly. the, if you could calculate the loss of productivity, when many of our offices, that's what they use primarily, that we just had offices that came to a standstill. We had concerns with people paying tax bills and paying other bills that we d weren't able to, do, you know, and so I do feel it's a critical function. And again, I'm not saying it's exclusive to the other effort to, to bring in citizen advisors to help us look at our overall technology. I, th I'm, I'm looking at this in terms of more of the, the back office nuts and bolts infrastructure as opposed to the website and some of the other uh, tech public communication technologies. So, Councilor. I, I also don't want to, to wait on this. Um, while I, I, you know, I, and I know you mentioned to us that this committee was something that was coming and I'm comfortable it's going to get appointed, but you know something, it's July and August and mm -hmm. committees don't come together well in July and August because people aren't here. Um, the other thing, there are communities that do a better job at this than we do in Massachusetts right now. One of the things we learned from the Collins Center, uh, they had the expertise to say, here's what this community does with their charter, here's what that community does with their charter. I'm sure that they're not going to, you know, we're not going to reinvent the wheel here, that there are communities that are right on top of this that have done this process already, and they're going to be able to provide us with a pretty good roadmap for doing this. So uh, I'm comfortable with getting going on a study if, in fact, that's what we need to do, and then have a citizens committee in place uh, with technology expertise to review it and determine whether they think it's an appropriate thing for here. But I don't see any reason to wait for that to happen. I was just going to, she can, I was going to call the amendment, she can oh. Councillor Schwartz. Yes, let's call the amendment. I, I don't, okay. I don't see Councillor Freeman Daniels. I, I just, I, this is a, this is a budget order. It requires a supermajority of the council. It's actually, we're not appropriating or authorizing any money. The money has already been appropriated by the council. It's already sitting in a departmental budget. Mm -hmm. 
we're asking you to change the title, the purpose of the funds. Um, so it's not an authorization, it's not a borrowing authorization or an appropriation. It's money that's already been appropriated. So you don't Pointing. actually need us to approve this then? Uh, <laughs> Well, we, our concern was that if someone read Munis server migration and we use those funds for anything other than Munis server migration, that that could be problematic. So we wanted to broaden the scope of it so that we could use it for some other things. I would, you know, I, I, I yeah, so that's, that's the purpose of it. Um, it's not new money. It's actually money that was appropriated in FY11. That's appropriated for yeah, it's, it's, there was a description in the capital plan that said that we were mu moving Munis server, server to MS SQL database. Uh, that was the project that was underway. And so there's some leftover money for that. Question. Councilor. So you're saying a supermajority is not necessary? Uh, that's, that's my, yes, that's my understanding. Supermajority is only required for a borrowing authorization. I thought it was, it was my understanding is required for every financial budget order. Mm, no, and only for a borrowing authorization. Yeah. My understanding is for every, every financial order. And this was not borrowed I'll money. This was actually a pro directly appropriated funds. So. So, does it require a vote at all, or just a simple majority? I mean, what well, we are. At, well, may, I'll let the finance director just explain because of the issues yeah, around. It's not. A, it, these are not borrowed funds. This is a cash capital project that you funded back in um, 2011. Um, he actually funded it in 2010, but it was FY11. And I, I feel more comfortable, I, I mean, I honor what you originally vote this money for. So I don't want us to spend money that you've targeted for something else. So to me, I would rather see you allow us to use this for other other things. I'm, I'm just, my question is solely about whether or not financial errors require a super majority. I mean, I, that's like, that's it. I mean. <coughs> yeah, only the, only the um, <coughs> borrowing authorization uh, is is generally where a two thirds majority is needed. But for but isn't it a super majority? Uh, they're also needed for zoning, obviously, which is totally different. But yeah, I thought there well, was actually the adoption of the budget doesn't require a super majority. Right, that requires a simple majority. So but you just appropriated seventy four million dollars. Does not uh, by majority. simple majority. Simple. A simple majority. But then, so financial orders. Um, anything related to property requires supermajority, right? Any, any taking of property? Real estate. Real estate. Real estate. Yeah. Yeah. Purchase of real estate and zoning and then borrowing. Uh, those, are the, those are sort of the three categories under mass general. And this is mass general law. This isn't our rules or, yeah. If you, I mean, I'm not really sure. If you'd like to take a recess, we can, no, no, no. I can try to find you the citation for the, in the law. But no, no, you don't need to do that. Maybe at a later point, if you could. Sure. Yeah. We do a roll call? On uh, the amendment. Yep. Okay. So, uh, so all those in favor of Councilor Freeman Daniels' amendment uh, to strike the language following the word apps uh, say aye, and I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Council Carney? No. Council Dwight? No. Council Freeman Daniels? Aye. Council LaBarge? No. Council Murphy? No. No. Yes. Okay. So five to the amendment uh, fails. So we're back to the main motion before you. Um, is there any further discussion on the main motion? Okay. Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Nay. Nay. Any abstentions? Okay. I believe the vote again was 5-2 in favor of adoption. Uh, and, uh, and then again, because we are attempting to uh, pay these, pay this, be able to pay this um, Google Apps bill, we would, we would request a second reading if possible on this. Well, this is Van Rules? Yeah. Second. Uh, so suspension of Rule 14 has been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Uh, so rules are suspended. Uh, I'd move second reading. Okay. Second. All those in favor on second reading say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Any abstentions? Okay. So uh, that has uh, been adopted on second reading. Um, the next item before you, this is the um, 
This is the first of two orders uh, upon the recommendation of the mayor and the finance committee ordered that $57,174 in the FY 2012 reserve for personnel be transferred to the following FY 2013 salary line items to fund AFSME and NAPIA collective bargaining agreements ratified on July 11, 2012 and July 12, 2012, respectively. I did you read through them. Oh, because sorry. you just read, you read them all. I read them through and yeah, Right, but don't you have to suspend Rule 38, this little late file? You are correct. So if I could first get a suspension of Rule 38. So Second. moved. And seconded. All Second. those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So uh, then uh, a, rec uh, a motion on first reading would be. Move to approve. Okay. Second. Okay. Any discussion or questions on this? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Suspend rule 14. Second. Okay. All those in favor of suspending rules say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So rules are suspended. Who's second reading? Se second. second. Okay. Motion made and seconded on second reading. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. The uh, second item. Uh, Related item, again, upon the recommendation of the Mayor and the Finance Committee, ordered that the following amounts from the FY 2012 salary line items be transferred to FY 2013 salary line items to fund the NAME, AFSME, and NAPIA collective bargaining agreements ratified July 9th, 2012, July 11th, 2012, and July 12th, 2012. Um, and again, that is a total of $122,005. Uh, of cross various PNS line items. Suspend rule 38. Second. Okay. All those in favor of suspending rules? Aye. Say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. And motion then, first reading. Okay. Uh, motion made and seconded on first reading. Any discussion or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Suspend rule 14. Second. Okay. Motion made and seconded to suspend rules. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Uh, Move second reading. Second. Okay. Uh, motion made and seconded on second reading. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So that is adopted on second reading. The next item is uh, upon the recommendation of the Recreation Commission, Conservation Commission, and Councilor Maureen T. Carney ordered that whereas the Open Space and Recreation Plan 2011 to 2017 recommends expanding the Connecticut River Greenway, including a Connecticut River boathouse, and whereas Lane Construction Corporation Incorporated has agreed to donate the land necessary to expand the Connecticut River Greenway to create a Connecticut River boathouse, river access, and boat docks, and whereas the land not necessary for a boathouse, docks, and related facilities has been identified identified as an ideal expansion of the Conservation Commission managed Connecticut River Greenway and will serve as a buffer for the Connecticut River Boathouse. Now therefore be it ordered that City Council authorizes the City of Northampton acting through its Conservation Commission to acquire by gift or purchase approximately six acres more or less adjacent to the Connecticut River now or formerly owned by Lane Construction Corporation and any related access utility and other easements under the provisions of Mass General Law Chapter 40 Section 8C and that the Conservation Commission be authorized to grant conservation restrictions as defined in Mass General Law, Chapter 184, Section 31, in the above land and to grant any easements that support recreation and a community boathouse. So moved. Second it. Okay, there's been a motion uh, made and seconded. Um, and uh, this, again, comes back to you on, this is on second reading. Mm -hmm. Is there any discussion or comments about this one? Okay. Um, all right. Uh, hearing none, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll on second reading. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Freeman Daniels? Aye. Councilor Barr? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Short? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Okay, uh, so the next item before you, uh, this is the gift acceptance uh, from uh, the Finance Committee. This is upon the recommendation of the Transportation and Parking Commission. Um, and this, if, if, you, if I can dispense with the whereas, if I can just read the operative clause, this is the gift from uh, Craig Della Pena 
uh, that the Northampton City Council gratefully accepts as a gift the donation of the bicycle corral uh, to the City of Northampton Central Services Department in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A and a half. So moved. Second. Second. Is there, any, is there any discussion on this one? Um, I would uh, ask the clerk to call the roll. Aye. Council Yes. Council Murphy? Yes. Council Schwartz? Yes. Council Yes. Council Yes. Council Yes. Yes. Okay. So that will, uh, that passes on first reading and we'll come back to you in August for second reading. Uh, the next is the second uh, gift item. It will require a suspension of Rule 38. So moved. Second. And seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So this is upon the recommendation of Councillor Eugene Tacey, um, and this is a uh, order that the Northampton City Council gratefully accept the donation as gifts to the City of Northampton of uh, materials uh, worth approximately $11,000 from the Trinity Park Fund for the purpose of renovating the Trinity Park Foundation in accordance with MGL Chapter 44, Section 53A and a half. Is there any discussion on this on first reading? Okay. Hearing, you need to move it. Oh, uh, oh sorry. To accept. Second. Okay. Made and seconded. Uh, Council President and Councillor Adams. Um, any discussion? Okay. I'll ask the clerk to call the roll on a first oh. reading. Oh. Oh, sorry. Okay. No, it's fine. Councilor Freeman Daniels. Aye. Councilor Barge. Ah, uh, no. Yes. Councilor Schwartz? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Okay. So that is accepted Come on Councilor. Move to suspend second reading rule. Okay. Second. Okay. Motion's made and seconded. All those in favor of suspending rules? Aye. 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 Uh, <laughs> I don't majority want to call it my, uh, my not a point of information. <laughs> yes, of please. Okay. I think I had heard our council president mention something to the effect about making sure that we got or received receipts on this and so forth. So I thought you were going to be adding this on. I'm not going to amend the language. My intent was not to amend the language, but to entreat because essentially this is under the purview of the. the or public works, but to entreat them to have a full accounting for this, for materials, and, and because it is the disbursement of a gift, and also to please notify all the abutters of the property. I, I That's why that, I didn't I won't on make it that a condition time. of acceptance. It was just a request. It's not a condition of acceptance. So. Okay, because that's why I didn't vote on it the first time because I thought you were going to add that on. Oh, I appreciate that. Can you just clarify what happened with my set motion to? Suspend the second reading rule because I'm not quite. It was approved. It was okay. Yeah. Yes. Then, but Councillor Labarge was asking a question. So right. point of information. So actually, this second was a reading. this was actually a an okay debate on second reading. I suppose. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I guess it was germane to second. <laughs> <laughs> These things only need simple majority. What's yeah. that? Receiving gifts only need a simple majority. Is that? Uh, I'm fairly certain yeah. it I probably think. does. Yeah. yeah. To accept. Uh, yeah. Just curious. I um, screwed up. Yes, what up we so it in. Uh, there's been a motion made and seconded and, and actually adopted to suspend rules. So now the question is on if someone wants to move second reading. Move second reading. Second. second. Okay. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion on second reading? I'll ask the clerk to call the roll on this. Council Barge? Yes. Council Murphy? Yes. Council Schwartz? Yes. Council Adams? Yes. Council Carney? Yes. Council Dwight? Yes. Aye. At least I got seven. Okay, so that completes uh, the orders, financial orders and other orders. Uh, we now have, oh, actually we have one more. This is the, um, this is upon the recommendation of Councillor Jesse M. Adams, ordered that Whereas the City Council from time to time reviews, revises, and updates its rules, and whereas during the discussion of the Northampton's proposed charter, many councillors also wish to review the City Council rules, now therefore be it ordered 
that the City Council shall create an ad hoc committee entitled the Council Rules Ad Hoc Committee, consisting of four members of the City Council to be selected by the President of the City Council. This ad hoc committee will establish a meeting schedule and present a new draft of the City Council Rules by October 4th, 2012, after which time <coughs> the committee shall be dissolved. Move approved. Second it. Okay. I'll turn to the sponsor. So as um, during, as it says in the order, um, during this session and, and particularly during the, the <coughs> discussions, we talked about reviewing the council rules as well. And I know that the councilor from Ward 3 suggested either a council meeting or two ago that um, maybe an ad hoc rules committee would be appropriate for this. Thus, I drafted this order. Um, the, there's also, there, there is already a process um, for this because the ordinance committee, part of their purview is to, is to deal with the council rules and changes, et cetera. Um, so there is a process that exists already. I, I drafted this uh, as a way of maybe doing a more comprehensive um, uh, review of the rules. Um, but if the council, you know, so this is about, you know, it, there are two processes available. We can either we can either do what's suggested in, in this order, which is have an ad hoc committee, which would be more elaborate, hopefully, and and um, just exclusively dealing with the council rules. But at the same time, there there is a uh, there is an existing process, and and so I just like to ask the council what they think. I wouldn't be I'm not wouldn't be insulted if this order was voted down. It's really about process. What process the council wants to review the rules through? Um, th there's a more expedient process of going straight through ordinance or. There's this pro this proposed process too. If the council wants to go through this, I've already drafted a set of comprehensive proposed change changes that I'll be proposing one way or another um, at a later point. But at this point, I would like to turn it over to the councilors and just see if there's a preference for either one of the processes that I've articulated. I've got Councilor Dwight and Councilor Lepark. Um The one appealing feature of this, of course, is it, it <coughs> allows other councilors who may have had who were not part of uh, rules and ordinance. An opportunity, if they if they feel strongly, an opportunity to participate in in, in reviewing and and uh, making recommendations about rule changes. Um, so, in that principle, I'm not I'm not opposed to it. And I, I think that, but at the same time, as Councilor Adams mentioned, there is a process in place that allows us to refer this to to the ordinance committee. Um, what's of critical importance is, and and Councilor Adams, I've discuss this and is the is the public vetting of this discussion in the past we've done it we actually went and retreat we had a council retreat we went up to Smith College That's and right. sat in a room for a couple of days and hacked it out and this was that had some pluses it had some minuses and I think some of the minuses were that <clears throat> we didn't have any feedback so and it also was not a public process and there's no reason that this should be kept out of the public conversation and the public have an opportunity to participate. So either Councilor Adams' recommendation or the the Ordinance Committee will afford both of those things and we will and we will move forward taking the recommendations and have um, special meetings convened to discuss our rules and the way we will conduct business in the future. Uh, Councilor Labarge, then Councilor Carney. Um, I was highly involved with the meetings that we had. Um, Council Fran Volkman, which I had talked to you about, um, had designated that, and it, and it was okay. I feel that I would be very comfortable having it referring to ordinance, be able to come to ordinance, because I already know the changes that I would like to see, and go ahead and go to ordinance and say, and come forth and say, this is the changes that I would like. So that's where I'm at with that. Councilor Kearney. Um, uh, I also concur with Councilor Labarge. I mean, uh, it, um, I think it may be redundant to create an ad hoc committee um, when what has been past practice has been review of the council rules by the Committee on Elections, Rules, and Ordinances. And what has also been the past practice has been uh, and has been repeated by every previous council president, you know, I've worked under um, that any counselor that comes to any subcommittee is invited to participate fully in the discussion right at the table. I mean, um, and so something like this is going to come before the full council anyway. Um, I, I just think it may be an additional step that's unnecessary. 
and I think that uh, all nine councillors, should they wish, will have the uh, opportunity on, in the or through the process of the ordinance committee to participate fully. So I, I'd rather just keep it as is rather than creating an, another ad hoc. Councillor Schwartz, Councillor Murphy. I agree. I think there's an infrastructure that we have, and I think it should be utilized without creating an additional layer. Hmm. Councillor Murphy. And, and my feelings are similar. We have already got a committee to do this. Any other councillors welcome to come to that, or if the council prefers, we can do it as, as a committee of the whole. It's going to end up back here anyway, so we could always have a special council meeting and just all work on it, or as many as are interested can mm -hmm. attend and work on it there. To create an interim entity seems a little redundant. Is that your phone, Chad? Is it supposed to be off? <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Freeman Daniels. I have uh, no, I have no objection to uh, to this process. I think it represents good process, um, but you know, an ordinance committee is also suitably open. Uh, if previous rules had been hashed out over many days in private, uh, I think it is a bit much to ask the ordinance committee to take it all on. Obviously, the ordinance committee has to review any technical changes, but does the ordinance committee really want to be the locus of attention for all for all of these suggestions? That's why I back uh, this uh, ad hoc committee, um, because it will, uh, it will take a lot of the attention and a lot of the it'll be a focused committee um, for the rules and and uh, I think it's uh, of course ordinance is going to see it because any suggested amendments will go to ordinance but I think uh, having a special uh, ad hoc committee focus on this is a good process and a good practice um, it's basically what uh, council the, the large councilor said we did the council did many years ago but uh, it will be done in public so I think I think that's actually a, a, a good first step um, but uh, I, I, I'm happy with the with the with this with this order as written. Yeah, I guess I think that's a good point. I mean, it would make sense to me that that um, if the past practice, or at least one or more occasions, was to have a sort of retreat, um, this would be kind of a, a similar thing. But in the public eye, before it goes to ordinances, it seems more consistent with past practice and just straight through ordinance. If we're going to do a comprehensive view, but let's. Well, if I could ask the members of the ordinance committee, um, that, that's a good point. Um, are you comfortable with dedicating that much time to uh, to maybe multiple days or at least multiple hours? It was the the retreats that we went on didn't necessarily have to go on for two or several days, but the the fact that. Uh, um, it, it is a long process. I mean, if the ordinance committee is prepared to do that, then I would have no objection to them doing it. But the, uh, I know that you have other business that comes before you that's pretty critical as well. So I mean, I, it, what Councilor Adams is offering here is an opportunity for the, essentially the same process to proceed, but dedicated to this one specific mm -hmm. issue. Well, Mr. Carney. Well, um, I think that this was done as recently as the last term under the previous council president, uh, a review, and correct me if I'm wrong, but as council president, Mr. Mayor, uh, uh, we reviewed, went through in a public process, at least in an open meeting, mm -hmm. and clearly announced at, at, a, at numerous council meetings prior that a detailed review was in order. And, and we spent time in the ordinance committee, and then as, but but those meetings actually were attended by the the supermajority of right. councilors we as well. actually posted them as meetings yes. of the council because yes yeah, the full better. council yeah. because yeah. they were because there were so many separate from the workshops yeah they were they were workshops for the specific purpose of going over the council rules and then we yeah we did the workshop I did a workshop on yeah. the council rules, that's right but then we did it then we actually many hours. then we actually yes. did a review yeah there was a whole a lot of time spent on public comment and a lot of time so spent within the last three years kind of it was yeah. how many yeah. meetings numerous numerous yeah. meetings and many hours i can and also say the term yeah. before that we actually um I, with we, councillor we had, barsley yeah councillor barsley myself mm -hmm. and councillor reckman we actually um uh well we had michael pill the city had hired yep. michael pill yeah, and we went right. through well we had to create new sections of the rules for 
uh, potential landfill yep. zoning hearings, and we went mm -hmm. through all the rules at that point. So, and we had we did have lots of public present for that. But that, but again, I, I'm, I'm just telling you what happened. Mm -hmm. I, there has not I been made, a. If I still had the, the sure, my point did. that I was trying to make there was that um, um, it is the uh, committee on elections rules and ordinances job to do this and those of us who serve on that committee councillor adams one of those um i think expect to to do that as a as part of the as part of the process uh, i know it would come back to us anyway but it, again it just seems like it's an additional layer to add and, and I, i'm I, I'm sure that as chair of the committee, as you've already said, Councillor Mur Murphy. Well, we've done it twice during our tenure already, right. so I don't see it as the Herculean tax that it's being no, suggested. No, I don't it think is. it would be as many hours, especially those of us who've already sat through. Just so you know, I have 20 to 25 changes. To, the to 20 or 25, okay, I just, think we could do in 20 or 25 hours. If I may, we're also talking about reviewing committees, and, the, and so we're talking about possible structural mm -hmm. So we're expanding it. The conversation beyond what you just a review of the rules, but it's also the the effectiveness and efficacy of the of, of committees as they stand. So just so th this will probably be a little more involved, and that's fine. That's good, mm -hmm. and, and and I'm I'm heartened to hear that that everyone's down with that. Everyone's <laughs> down for long slogs, but yep. that's, I mean that I think it's mm -hmm. that's yeah. yeah. Councillor Freeman Daniels. Um, I'm not aware. Uh, I don't read this order as being also a review of the council committees. Those are required to be changed by ordinance, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, that's right. I think mm -hmm. we'll probably be looking at that a little later. If I may add to that, I mean, my hope is that they're done in concert, mm -hmm. because I think to to separate them out would not necessarily serve as well. So that it is the whole process is to be reviewed in concert. Um, is my hope and I understand that that in order to enable it it would require ordinance changes but the fact that he, when we review the rules it should be done in consideration that we may be reviewing rules for a committee that might not exist um, any other questions about the uh, question before you okay um, okay want to roll call this one too uh, Council Murphy's requesting roll calls tonight. Uh, okay, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed, no. Council Murphy? No. Council Schwartz? No. Council Adams? Yes. Council Carney? No. Council Dwight? Uh, yes. Council Freeman Daniels? Aye. Council LaBar? No. I believe that's uh, four no's and three yeses, so the uh, measure fails. Um, so, did I did I record that correctly? Okay, okay. So uh, that the next item on the agenda uh, is uh, ordinance. Um, Can we take these next two together because they're. Certainly. Related. Okay. So that we have two ordinances together. Uh, one is amending Chapter 128, uh, revising section of Chapter 128, uh, and creating um, a section under animals and fowl, prohibiting the feeding of wildlife and regarding waste disposal. And then the companion ordinance uh, uh, revises Section 40 5. Uh, and to expand the list of enforcing officers and penalties for non-criminal disposition and creates the enforcement mechanism for the before I move the pair. Okay. Second. Okay. Been a motion made and seconded. Councillor Labarge. Yes, I have a question. Um, I received a call from a resident today in regards to, and I know he was at the hearing because I had come in later, and he had told me, Mr. Walker, that he had brought up about the language of unattentionally like say if you had blueberry bushes in your yard and or you had apple trees or whatever and that attracts bears 
So he said when he had mentioned that, nobody replied back to him on the committee. So could you explain that language? Sure. Um, Thank you. I, I, you were looking at me, Counselor, yeah. so you were asking me. From what I recall of the discussion about that, those both of those examples fall within the agricultural okay. exemption. Okay, so As even if you have the trees and the bears and that, you wouldn't get fined if they come into your yard. Not only would you not be fined, you would not be asked to remove them. Okay, I hope not. <laughs> and I, there is actually specific language, Counselor. It says feed that is deposited by natural vegetation or found solely as a result of normal agriculture or gardening, as well as standing crops, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, is not considered feeding. Councilman. And I believe, I believe uh, Ben Wood responded to that question yes. at the time. The, yes. I don't think the committee responded to Mr. Walker, but Mr. Wood did about the agricultural clause and the fact that that was okay. Yes. Thank you. So are there any other questions or discussions about the, um, about the uh, uh, ordinances before you? Okay. Oh, Councilor Freeman Daniels. Just one thing. Uh, I think most of the council got a very lengthy memorandum from uh, uh, Mr. Rothstein. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, I, I don't think it uh, really affected much of the overall essence of what this ordinance is about. There might be some issues that he brings up that we might want to revisit at some point, maybe through a committee. But uh, I'm comfortable voting for this, uh, to approve this, um, despite some of the small vagaries that he points out. And, uh, um, you know, uh, I, I wish that uh, we had seen it earlier at, at the two public safety meetings or the four health meetings that which it was discussed. We might have been able to actually work some of those language changes out in committee uh, rather than at the second reading. Uh, but I think that possibly we might be able to revisit it in the future. It turns out that there are some enforcement difficulties or uh, there are some particularly glaring problems with the ordinance that we're passing tonight. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Dwight. And, and the, the, <coughs> we all know that there's been a massive amount of misunderstanding about what it is this ordinance does. It is. It is not a criminal violation. You will not be, police will not be roaming the streets looking for people feeding animals. This is actually gives, it is merely actually a low intensity tool for enforcement officers beyond a criminal violation for citing if there is a problem that manifests. If there is a conflict problem with wildlife, that enforcement officers have a fee schedule instead of criminal charges. and. That's the intent here, is to actually diminish the amounts of conflicts that people are experiencing, and not and it's to respond to problems. It is not to do preemptive arrests or citations or anything on anybody. You are not going to be charged for feeding the ducks at Look Park. You are not going to be charged for having a picnic. You're not going to be charged for any of these things. Unless, of course, they actually do manifest as a problem and they need to be addressed. And this gives enforcement officers an opportunity to say, please don't do this anymore. And should someone continue to violate that, then they will be fined. That is the extent of this rule. That's the purpose of this rule. It is not to uh, generate more costs, more of a burden on, the, on the, the community. It's actually to provide the means by which enforcement officers may act if there is a public safety threat. So just the only thing I would add is some, including Mr. Rothstein, have called for an educational component. I think there is one built into it. First of all, I don't think you need, every time a law is passed, I don't think there needs to be an educational right. outreach, but in this case, there is one. They come, they tell you, you have to stop, and you have 48 hours to do it. You've been educated. Yes. So I, I, <laughs> think, I think that is the educational component to it. Point well taken. Very well taken. Okay, is there any other discussion of this particular, these two ordinances that are before you? Hearing none, um, I'll ask all those in favor to say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. That, uh, okay, the next item before you is coming back to you on second reading. Uh, this is upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narkowitz, and this is. Uh, <laughs> 
revising section 89-11 uh, through 89-13, uh, deleting the Office of Community and Economic Development. Move to approve. Second. Second. Is there any discussion on this on second? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? Okay. Okay, the next item again is coming to you on second reading, and this is amending uh, section 312-103, schedule two, uh, uh, to provide no parking at certain times on Ridgewood Terrace, the southern side, um, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. and 2.30 to 4 p.m. on school days, a point 80 feet west of Jackson Street to Prospect Avenue. Move, move. Okay. Second. Second. And a motion made and seconded. Um, is there any discussion on this on second reading? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So, um, let's see. Uh, Would it be possible since all these referrals are going to the same place that we take them as a group? Well, the. the or is there one that's different? Okay. What's I think that? they're all going to ordinance. No, no. Okay. Um, we have some late files. We've got late uh, files that are. Well, yeah, we have a. If you we can. We do have some late files mm -hmm. that are non referrals mm -hmm. that are coming to you first. Um, and okay. so these are coming to you. They were uh, approved by the um, ordinance committee, uh, recommended by the ordinance committee. And so. It's a series of one, two, three, these three, correct, and, and a fourth also um, uh, that, that were approved by the Ordinance Committee and recommended to come forward to the City Council. And so they, I can, uh, three of them are, have to do with uh, parking meter uh, locations and regulations, on-street parking meter zones and off-street parking areas, and the, the the fourth one has to do with a specific parking area on King Street. So they would require a suspension of uh, Rule 38. So okay. move. Second. Okay. information. Sure. Can you just read the numbers off? I, mean, I just, I, I, 30, 312, 36, is that? 312, 36, 312, 109, and 312, 110. Would you separate 312, 36, please? Sure. Thank you. Uh, from? Uh, from, I'm going to. I have a conflict. I'm, I'm sure. Just on every, so all, all the votes uh, pertaining to that okay. one. Okay. On the first, vote, you're asking for separation. Okay. For suspension okay. of rules right. as well, or for the suspension yes, for of rules for for every. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Please. So uh, so okay. this would be a suspension of uh, Rule 38 on just the 312-109, and 312-36, and the th the other 312-109, mm -hmm. but not the 312-110. <laughs> okay. Oh. So move. Second. Second oh, okay. I'm, I think. Uh, so you wanted 36. Well, I I just wanted 312.36 by itself. Perfectly. Okay. So then instead, we're this would be suspending rules on for the, the two on 312.109 and the one on 312.110. Move suspension. <laughs> Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed. Any abstentions? Okay. So now could we request a separate suspension of rule 38 on uh, the 31236. So moved. Second. Second it. Okay. All, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. All those opposed. Are there any abstentions? One. Okay. One abstention. Okay, great. Uh, so rules have been suspended, and so now I would request uh, uh, first reading, a motion on first reading. Well, we can. Uh, Three are, three are sort of, well, we actually have to do them in three parts for that other right. reason. So uh, the first uh, set would be 312.109 and 312.36, if there's a motion on first reading. So we'll second it. Second it, okay. Um, and these are the, uh, these are a series of ordinances that, that I've sponsored. You may re recall in March, I introduced an ordinance to amend the um, long-term long-term parking permits for 10-hour and long-term lots, uh, from uh, raising them to $60. Uh, there had been a lot of public discussion, a lot of debate, a lot of feedback that I received. The Transportation and Parking Commission endorsed the initial idea. They then endorsed 
um, a split fee structure. I then um, came back to you at the beginning of June, asked that you table or postpone indefinitely my original proposal, and I put forth a revised proposal which would raise those fees to $45 for both the 10-hour and long-term lots. It also makes a series of, of corrections to a number of the uh, parking areas that previously had not been classified as 10-hour spots, for example, um, or where parking permits were allowed to be used. Um, and it also uh, did some uh, work around uh, some other parking spot designations. So the other important change from the previous was it also proposed to raise the monthly uh, pass in the parking garage. Uh, $15, a $15 increase as well from $75 to $90 a month. So that was the other change. So those were just endorsed by the Ordinance Committee and so now they're being brought back to you for your consideration. And I believe you may want to just explain the conflict just so that you, people will understand why sure. you're separating these I, out. Um, I, I have the pass that's going up from $290, $290 a month from 75 and I called uh, ethics and they said that because it's, there's a small the, the percentage of the city that has the pass is so small that I that I and I I have one that I have a conflict because um, keeping it at the amount that it's out would mean that I get an economic benefit from it so so um, it's not like you know the tax rate where although every every property owner on the council pays taxes there's a this is such a small pool of people that that it creates a conflict for me. Okay, just just that would try helpful just so the public understands. Right. So Thank that you. so the one ordinance you're gonna we want to separate out and abstain is the one that pertains to the parking increase in the garage. Right. Thank you. Okay. Three twelve thirty six. Yeah. Um, so those are are what's before you. Um, and so I don't know if you have any questions or discussion about it, Councilor Freeman Daniels. So I, I want to thank uh, the mayor and the council for. Uh, being uh, patient during this uh, time, this time where we haggled over, uh, over parking passes, and um, I appreciate uh, that the council uh, is voting to table it and um, ta to table the previous uh, uh, fee structure. And, and I think this one is a, a decent uh, compromise, given the fact that the meter fees have raised, uh, have gone up. Um, didn't exactly agree with the fact that with raising the meter fees, but since they're higher, uh, the passes are uh, reasonably uh, reflected in this in this increase. So, uh, so I'm I'm ready to vote aye. Councilor, um, I just want to let you know that uh, Suzanne Beck has written me from the Chamber of Commerce, also endorsing this. You'll recall that they were originally opposed to uh, the proposed increases in the um, in her words they. Uh, $45 a month permit doesn't provide a significant financial incentive. It does offer a convenience for downtown employees. The permits are also a way for downtown employers to compensate their employees for the cost of parking. So thank you for considering the points of view that have been expressed throughout this process. I hope you and your colleagues will agree with the merits of what has been proposed. Okay. Um, any other discussion on Again, we're um, on, on these items. Um, hearing none, I will ask for a vote on the 312.110 and 312.109 pieces of the ordinance. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. And then I would ask for a, a vote on section 312-36. Uh, All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Abstain. Okay. So those are adopted on first reading, um, and uh, we'll, we'll come back to you for a second reading in August. So the next item that, again, uh, we'll re uh, we did the late file already. So I think we've sus have we suspended rules on this one. I've lost track. Yes. Mm -hmm. So much separating. So. Uh, so we've suspended rules on this. This is um, upon the recommendation of uh, Transportation and Parking Commission and City Councilor Owen Freeman Daniels. Uh, this is uh, 
amend section 8 on street parking meter zone of section 312-109 and it adds uh, King Street on the easterly side from a point 25 feet northerly of Edwards Square to a point 69 feet northerly of Edwards Square um, a four hour class 1E uh, parking meter zone. Uh, would you like to make a motion to approve? Motion to approve Second. and seconded and then I recognize Councillor Freeman Daniels. Thank you. Uh, this is a if, uh, this is a an ordinance that uh, allows two parking spaces in front of St. Valentine's Church on King Street. Uh, it um, there was a uh, informal arrangement that the parishioners had for a long time that they were able to park in front of it, and uh, when the, that informal arrangement became um, untenable, uh, the, they came to us and asked if we could. Uh, if, the, if the Transportation Parking Commission could find a way to create some parking in front of uh, the church. And um, it's been, uh, I believe that was May. Uh, and uh, so I, I'm, I'm going to ask for two readings on this tonight because um, it's been quite some time since the parishioners have been unable to park in front of the church. Uh, and uh, some of them, many of them are, are, are elderly and uh, it would be a nice, very convenient for them to, to have this available immediately. Any other comments on this? Okay. Aye. Great. All those in favor on first reading say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Move to suspend rules. Second. Okay. There's been a motion made and uh, seconded to suspend rule 14. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Move approval. Second. Okay. On second reading, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So that completes um, those late files. We now have a series of ordinances that amend section 22-115, section 22-119, section 22-120, section 22-121, section 22-123, section 40-5, uh, uh, section 28-10 and section 28-11 and these are intended for referral to the Committee on Elections, Rules, Ordinances, Orders and Claims. Move to refer. refer. As a group. As a group. Okay. And it's been seconded uh, by Councillor Carney, I believe. All those in favor of referring say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So that completes all the uh, ordinances, late filed or otherwise. Are there any updates from the council president or committee chairs? Uh, I would only say uh, get your email. Actually, personally, I think it would be great. I'd prefer it not even be considered as an option. Get your email address because I think it really helps if uh, the community has uh, to know that essentially your name in front of at northamptonmod.gov is the way to contact you without trying to find out your personal email address whatever clever name you have attached to that so if if you would um, contact uh, Munis and figure out how to assign the password and all that la -dee da and then it can all be uniformly put on the website so people can have contact with you. Also uh, just a reminder that all that email under the Freedom of Information Act is public. It, these are public transactions and I believe you have to keep for seven years. Uh, the mayor doesn't know about this anyway. <laughs> But, uh, but I believe it's seven years in which the m emails have to be retained. So either you retain them, or they'll be retained will be on retained. the server in the cloud, as okay. it were. But uh, this I, this goes a long way, I think, to facilitating uh, public asset access to us. So thank you. Is there any new business? Okay, hearing none, I would entertain a motion. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. The meeting is adjourned. <laughs>